Good day! This is Teacher Rowan. I'll be your guide in exploring Google Apps for Education, for teaching and learning. In Google for Education, teachers can connect and collaborate easily while staying on task. It gives teachers the freedom to spend more time personalizing the learning experience and less time managing it. Students can learn essential skills such as 21st century problem solving, which they can use it in their future careers. As such, the accessibility features will also help and assist every learner to do their best work. Google offers different useful applications that we can use to connect education to technology. This will help our teachers as a 21st century educators to innovate and find ways on how to make teaching and learning more exciting, engaging, effective, and flexible to the demands of the society. Let's re-explore the education experience by discovering new angles to create, collaborate, and communicate as one. Para sa bata, para sa bayan, at para sa guro. Ang pagkatuto, huwag gawing komplikado. Sulong edukalidad. Happy Saturday! Good afternoon, everybody. Hi there, Jen. How have you been? Hi, Pam. I'm doing great. I had the best lunch ever. I know. I saw you eating a while ago at the cafeteria and I saw how you are actually enjoying your lunch. And that's great. I can see the smile on your face. So maybe a little later, we could also have our snacks as well together. Yeah, and coffee. And coffee. Coffee. Yes. Anong klase ba ng kape, Pam? Yung kaya akong ipaglaban. ipaglaban? <laughs> Hindi. O oh, yung kaya kang panindigan. Doon tayo sa paninindigan. Ah, kahit mapait, naninindigan. Ayan. Yeah. At nalalamig, alam na mayroon ka pa rin kape. Happy Saturday again! Good afternoon, everybody! And I hope that all of us are all set for the afternoon set of shares. So, are you, Jen? Ready? Yes! Okay. Always ready, so, Pam! That's great! And as we all know, we all had our break. Now, a little stretching and all, and we are ready to begin. So our morning was actually filled with a lot of ahas and wows. So let us keep the ball rolling to have our achievement unlocked for the second half. So to begin this afternoon's session, brace yourselves as we learn more engaging ways to teach history and MAPE with arts and culture plus classroom and slides. So allow me first to introduce our very efficient and effective speaker for today. She started teaching as a college instructor in 1999 at the University of the Philippines, Diliman. After a two-year stint in publishing, she found herself back in education in 2001, but this time to teach high school. At present, she is a school administrator and has handled students from kindergarten to senior high school. She is an Apple teacher, a Google certified educator, level one and level two, and a Google for Education certified trader. She is also part of the Google for Education Google Classroom video series, a series that aims to help teachers around the world leverage Google Classroom to deliver distance and hybrid learning as part of her personal advocacy. She volunteers to train and organize professional development sessions for teachers in the Philippines and in the Asia-Pacific region through her Google Educator Groups. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, let us all listen to no other than Ms. Maan de Guzman. Hi, Ms. Maan. Hello. I hope you can hear me clearly. Hi, Ms. Maan. Good to see you again. Hello, teacher. Yeah. Hello, Pog. Good, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm so glad oh. that I was given the honor to introduce you. Seeing you uh, again makes me smile like this. Samantalang kami, tuwang-tuwa kami, na naging uh, churchista ka namin, tabital sa aming GED event. Okay, so we're going to be giving you the floor, Miss Maan? Absolutely. No problem. 
So hello, good afternoon to everyone. Perhaps we can start already. So basically, yung task for today is to talk about teaching history and MAPE with this particular, I call it a repository actually, of Google with Google Arts and Culture. So let's talk about each of the apps that I will smash together today. Para lang pumalinaw sa atin what's going to happen. So the first thing I'm going to talk about, of course, is Google Arts and Culture. So what it is, it's an online platform. And what it has is all these high-resolution images and videos of artworks and cultural artifacts all, from all over the world. So a lot of it, galing siya sa mga partner institutions or organizations with Google. And what I love about it, I'm not sure kasi kung gano kayo ka uh, interested, let's say in museums, pero ako kasi pag napupunta sa ibang lugar, ang una kong kinahanap ay museum. And the reason for that is because yun yung pinakamagandang way for us to really learn about culture. You know, culture can be seen a lot on museums, and there's a lot to say about a particular country and how they treat museums. So, dito sa Google Arts and Culture, actually, you'll be able to find many of the major museums around the world. So, kung nagtuturo po kayo ng history, ng music, and art, ma sobrang useful po siya sa inyo. Kasi nandito na lahat. Okay, you'd see yung small video na siya share ko are just some of the things that you can use. In fact, pati science, meron kasi may climate change artifacts dito na pwede niyong gamitin. I'll show you how to navigate it later when we go to the actual demo. Second, the second thing I want to show you, hindi na to bago, it's Google Classroom. no. So it's a free blended learning platform uh, from Google. So everyone can use, uh, not everyone, everyone in the education domain can actually use it. If you're using it in a private account kasi may konting Kailangan, you're vouching for the fact that you're using, you're allowed to do so. But largely, Google Classroom is really useful in terms of streamlining the sharing of materials between teachers and students. Obviously, I use it a lot in my own classes kasi napaka-useful talaga niya. And yung third tool na isa smash ko with all of those with those two will be Google Slides. Now, traditionally, ang Google Slides, like how I'm using it right now, is just for presentation. No? So most teachers use it, let's say, to create a presentation for your own slide decks kapag, ka, let's say, you're teaching not just online but also in face-to-face. -face. Pero ang Google Slides kasi pwede nyo ring gamitin worksheet. Pwede nyo rin siyang gawing digital notebook. So, nagiging repository din siya of things that you'd like the students to learn. So, marami kayong pwedeng gawin sa Google Slides. Okay? So, let's start with the demo. Okay? Let's start with the app smashing already. Let me just move to the next slide. Okay, here. So over here, what I've done is I've had, uh, I've created a classroom. Tapos dito sa classroom na to, of course, because I'm teaching history and mape with arts and culture, uh, I want to be able to show you how you can put all of them together. So unang-una, so let's talk about first um, yung Google Arts and Culture. So to, for you to be able to access that, all you need to do is really search for it. Or you can use this link, Arts and Culture. Um, dot google dot com and when you click on it you'll be placed in this landing page now you see that there's also an app for it both in google play and in the app store but largely you will be placed here in today's top picks and then there's a lot of features here largely for art let's see and the things that you might want to do but what i love to using uh, google arts and culture for is here itong tab na to in particular the sidebar and you will see all the ways by which na, na arrange na nila yung information that they have now one of the reasons why i am a fan of google arts and culture no my teachers know this because i always pedal it to them is because yung pagkaka arrange niya is not limited to a topic alone hindi rin siya arranged siya in so many ways. You can explore. You can look at what's nearby. Uh, you can look at collections. You can look at themes. So kung meron kayong themes na gustong tingnan, pwede. Meron silang what they call Google Experiments. And it's really interesting. I won't go touch it so much. But it's really, for example, a body of work of a particular artist was fed into an, an AI and what would the AI say or how will they make sense of that body of work? And so may mga ganun siyang klaseng ano, no, artifacts that you will see. But this one, this part over here, is what is most useful to history, music, and art teachers. So here, they have collated collections in, by artists. Merong medium. Okay, so let's say digital art or let's say oil painting. 
merong art movements. So if you want to look at Renaissance or, uh, sorry, that's not an art movement, but largely, let's say uh, for Impressionists, for example, or Cubists, uh, Picasso, for example, if you want artists, by historical events and historical fig figures, and also by places. So and daming ways by which you can access the material in Google Arts and Culture. Now, the reason why I'm such a fan of it is because I'm also a fan of allowing the students to be able to access primary materials or primary documents. A lot of the times, kasi when we're teaching history, na natatali tayo dun sa idea na ang history ay galing sa textbooks. Pero at the same time, ang textbook, hindi siya dapat yung primary source of information. Kasi pwede naman nating bigyan yung mga bata ng access to all these primary documents. I like doing that. Halimbawa, kung mag, mag, mamaya makikita nyo nang gagamitin ko World War II. So kung mag-aaral kami about World War II, gusto ko na nakikita nila in for, their, from the, for themselves yung photos of World War II. Kung ano ang nangyari sa Manila noon. And they can make their own deductions. Mahilag din ako magbigay sa kanila ng, for example, yung mga documents, newspapers at that time or news clippings at that time. Uh, para makikita nila, ano ba yung report during sa time na yun? Bakit kaya ganun? And so it allows them to look at history with their own eyes and their own hands. Diba? So it allows them to develop that critical thinking skill. Now we always say na history, you know, learning history look means that you are standing on the shoulders of giants. Kasi you see further than everyone. Kasi di ba meron din kasabihan na history repeats itself? So ang maganda doon sa pagkakaroon ng primary text for the kids is that they can learn and see patterns in history that might be useful to them today. So that's really important to me. Kaya ako fan ng Google Arts and Culture kasi maraming primary artifacts, primary information or primary documents that you can see here. Hindi mo na siya kailangang hanapin kasi noon ang challenge is to look for kung nasaan siya. Diba? Or kunwari, kung gusto mong makakita ng primary document, punta ka sa museum. Ngayon, hindi mo na kailangan pumunta. Kahit sa ang parte ng mundo, basta nandito sa arts and culture, pwede mong ma-access yung photo o yung primary document. Okay, so that's Google Art and Culture. So here, you can toggle here kung ano yung mga pwede mong gawin. Okay, so let's say I'm creating an activity. And this particular activity for my students is what I call expert groups. Now, in expert groups, I will divide the class, let's say, into groups. And what I want for them to do is to be able to research on a particular part of history. So as I said earlier, let's say I want to do that for World War II. So I can actually access it in different ways. So because it's a major historical event, ikiklik ko lang dito yung historical events. Okay. And you can see all possible historical events that might have been that my historical events in, in, in the world. So it's even, um, you can also access it, let's say, alphabetically. Okay, so you can look at it that way. You can look at it in time. This is one of my favorites. Kasi tiga mo, naka-timeline siyang ganyan. So mahiki, pwede mo siyang tignan in terms of chronology also. Or you can just look at all and look at what your options are. At syempre, ang pinaka-important, pwede rin search. So you can actually just search for the things that you want. So and ito na World War II kasi madalas siyang ma-search. You know? Pero you also have the option to do that. World War II. And it will show you whatever is there. Okay, so here. So here are the topics that you can see in World War II. So marami siyang pwede. So here themes na siya. So here, for example, um, second, remembering the Second World War. This one is stories from the Holocaust, which is a significant part of that particular period of history. And there are also collections that either happen during that time period or yun yung, uh, yun yung theme ng particular collection. They also have what they call stories. Okay, for example, here, D-Day, okay, which is also a significant part of World War II. But let's go back to this uh, toggle piece. So let's say I click here. And it shows me immediately a header no, and what it is about. So here, my students can actually access what it is. It also shows you where it's from. Okay. It also tells you the different collections that are available that fall under the category and all the stories that you can use here. Okay. 
So now, if I'm looking at expert groups, if I want to divide my students into experts group, expert groups, I want them to be able to look at different aspects of World War II. And the reason why I want them to do that is so that they become an expert of that aspect. That's later on, mag exchange sila ng ideas in their class and exchange the information that they have. So in order for me to do that, what I want to be able to do, of course, is to divide the classwork. So let's say I want to do that. I go to classwork. Now, in Google Classroom, there are ways for you to organize. No? Meron kaming mga, meron kaming uh, mga, ako personally, I always organize by topic. But if you want other ways, uh, let me share a link. So there's a Google Classroom series that you can actually take a look at. I'm part of that series too, as the bio note said. That's your Earl, baka pwedeng, ay, sorry, kailangan pala link. Baka po pwedeng i-share yung link in the comments section so that they can access it. So at, if you want to learn more on how to, um, if, how to actually be able to organize your Google Classroom, Marami pong pwedeng gawin dyan. Yung sa mga links na shinare ko, sana po ma-share sa comment section para makita nila. Anyway, going back. So one of the things that I like doing first is creating a topic. So the first thing I do is do that. So for example, in this topic, I say World War II. Let's add that. Now, every time I create anything else in the in the classwork tab, I make sure na I pick a topic so that it's organized. So you could see ito, may ganito siyang topics kung ito yung gagawin nila today, kunwari. Pero for me right now, let's do World War II. The next thing I do is I create material. Now, material is what you choose if you want to give a reference. Kasi what you want to make sure is that it's not confused as a, may gagawin ba sa material na ito or wala. So I put, mat I use material to make sure that my students know that it's a reference and not, uh, not anything that they need to do anything about except read and consider. So the first thing I do is I title it. So let's say I say World War II, to World War II materials. And maybe I give them a very brief, uh, depending on what instructions it is that you need. So let's say uh, you say, um, please read the following materials. Okay. And basically what I just want them to be able to is explore. So now here's the link ad. So all I have to do now is copy this link right over here in Google Arts and Culture, see this icon here. It copies immediately to my clip uh, to my um, clipboard. I add a link here, and I just add link. So now I can then choose who to send this to. So Konwari, I have all of these students. So I want them all to access it. I put it under a topic, World War II, and then I post. Okay. And once I've done that, it's here already. It's also added to my stream. So that way the kids know that there's new material that they need to access. So it's easy for them to, they can just click on this and it takes them immediately to the same page that I want them to look at. Okay, so that's the first way you can do, use it. So maraming pwedeng yung pa gawin dahil dito. Now, when I'm doing expert groups, I want them to focus on a specific ano, ano, to, on a specific aspect of that particular time in history. So what I like doing is to divide them in groups. And what I do usually is I use Google Slides. Okay. I use Google Slides to allow them first to collaborate because I can give them editing and they can make an instant presentation. Also, I use Google Slides because afterwards, we use it as a, like a digital notebook. So what they do is they put their thoughts in it and then they share. And then everyone's access can be edited to CanView. And then they can still go around and look at all of their contributions. Now, when I do experts group, expert groups, what I tell them is to do this. So I have a slide where all the instructions are. So they go to the links that they've been assigned to them by group. So I'll do that later. I'll show you how to do that in classroom. And then I want them to take note of the important information. And then I want them to share with their group and discuss which notes to put in their slide because they have a slide dedicated to them. And then they create their slide. Okay, so all the instructions are there. Now, if you're curious about where I got that slide, that's actually just from slidesmania.com. You can see it here. 
And that particular site is a good source of templates that you can use. They also have ready templates for digital notebooks and whatnot. And um, I know that's like not in this app smashing that I said, but it's really useful because it already has graphics I don't have to create. So if I'm doing something like this and I need a quick template, I just go to slidesmina.com. Okay, going back. So now what I've done is I've set up the slide this way, and I want to make sure that each particular slide has a particular aspect to look at. In this case, group A will be the day. And I've written here who is part of group A. So let's do the rest. So let's say for group B, I want them to be able to look at the Second World War in 100 objects. So that is the story they have to look at. Okay. And then I will assign who this is for. So let's say I'm going to use all of my friends from GEG <laughs> because I miss them there. Okay, and then let's say for group C, so it's so easy, right? You know, if you go to Slides Mania, there are so many other templates that you can use. So, sobrang napapadali pa rin yung mga ginagamit. For group C, for example, I want them to look at Hiroshima. And you know that that's an important part of um, World War II. So, let's say this is yung group ni Mary, ni Teacher Rowey. Uh, sama natin si... Uh, sino pa ba? Let's say, see Teacher Jessica, who is my coach in VIA. Hi, Teacher Jess. Okay. And then for Group D, let's say we're doing uh, women in war. So they're looking at, let's say, uh, what are the effects on particular groups. Okay. So you can actually, I'll put my, uh, no, my teammates. So there's Alvin, there's Leia, and there's Russell. So hello to Team Alpas of Via 21. Okay, so now I actually have a slide template for each of the groups already. And what it does is it tells the kids where to go and what to do. So even if, let's say, I give them the instructions in the classroom already, they can refer back to this slide para alam nila kung ano yung gagawin nila next. Now, kung sobra talagang may oras ako, ilalagay ko rin dito yung link na gusto kong puntahan nila. Pero ang gagawin ko na lang, gagawin ko yun sa Google Classroom. Okay? So now I have to make sure that the link settings are right. So here, I will put, for example, here, um, share with demo workspace. So anyone can be an editor. That way, they, when they access it, they can edit. And there's only one file. I will copy that link. And I'll go back to my classroom. Okay. So now I have to create something that they need to do something with. So hindi siya material lang. It's actually, uh, let's say, an assignment. So if I'm going to make an assignment, I immediately add a link to the slide that I just made. Okay. And I fix that setting to... Students can edit the file. Now, let's look at those different settings no, very briefly para lang ma-explain ko. If you set it that students can view a file, that means they can't do anything with it, but only, um, I'm sorry, di kayo ko nang dikay kasi kakakain lang natin, ano? so I'm sure kayo rin. But anyway, kung yung students can view a file, they can't do anything about it, but look at the material. Now, I use that only if, I let's say, I create a hyper document na parang slides or docs na pwede nilang ma-access yung link, pero hindi nila pwedeng i-edit kung ayaw ko ma-edit nila. Now, yung students can edit a file. Ito yung ginagamit ko if I'm using Google Slides or Google Docs as a workbook or a worksheet. So, I put them there. Tapos, if I want individual work, I make sure it's set this, yung make a copy for each student. Kasi ang gagawin naman ng classroom, ilalagay niya yan sa isang drive specific to me that I can access and look at their individual work. But for in this particular instance, since I want them to do all of their slides in a single file, I'm just going to put students can edit the file. Okay. So now that that's there, I'm just going to title it. So let's say I'm titling it as Expert Groups or World War II. There. So now I'm going to have to give them instructions. Okay, so I will pretend that I'm giving them instructions already. So let's just put instructions here. I know, better yet, 
Let me copy paste from the slide. Iba ang dali. Okay. There. So that's going to, how it's going to look like. Now, how do they know, diba, kung ano yung dapat sa kanila? So after I do this, I will make sure that I place, let's say, the topic. So it's World War II. I'm assigning it to all students because everyone has to make sure that they're able to. Kung meron kayong points, pwede yung lagyan ng points. I come from a school na ang system namin is standards-based. So we don't have points na numbered. So normally for, let's say for work, I would put it as ungraded. Or I will add a rubric instead. Now in Google Classroom, you can add a rubric um, using it from Sheets. Or you can create the rubric here. I'll just go to this briefly para makita nyo. So you can put the criteria here in the descriptor. Tapos kung ilang points, you just keep adding. Sobrang yung ano niya. Sobrang convenient niya. Depending on what rubric it is that you want to do. I use it always for writing. Kasi we use uh, rubrics for writing. So I make sure that uh, I always have a rubric for them to guide them. But this time, because it's just an exercise, I will keep it as ungraded okay and then i will assign okay so that's for all students okay so there it is so let's say for example that i want them to access different materials diba kasi nga expert groups sila so i want them to be able to just that group to access the material that i want for them to see so what i do now is create a new one and i create now material okay so here I will title it according to their group. World War II material uh, for group A. Now, group A, ang kanilang title is, ang kanilang topic is D-Day. So I go back to Google Arts and Culture, okay? And I look for D-Day. Now, as I'm searching for D-Day, you will find it will talk about so many other things. See? And I can now look for the things that I want. Okay. Now, I can use like this in terms of historical event. And this is Normandy Landing, which is basically today. So I will just take a look at that and see if that's applicable for me. Ah, okay. So yeah, it's a collection. Hold on. So the best way, I guess, for me to do that is look at historical okay. events again. And then I know there's D-Day here, okay. See? There. And then we can look at it already. Okay, so all. I've done this. I know it's there. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry. There. So themes palette. Okay. So now I can look for the day already. There. Okay. So now that I want this, all I have to do now is look at the link. Okay. So. And now what I want to do now is copy it. Okay. I can go to classroom, but I like copying it. Para lang sure ako. And then I go back to my classroom and put the link here. And so now the link is there for my students to access. Now, because this particular uh, this particular material is just for group A, what I want to do now is to make sure that only specific students get access to it. So I know that my students' names are just demo names, but if, let's say, I want the first five students to get it, I just click on them, and it says five students. I make sure there's a topic so that they know how to access it, and then I just click on post. Now, when that happens, uh, when I do that, what happens is the only people that can see this in their stream will be the people that I have given access them to. So immediately what it does is it differentiates the materials for my students. Okay, let's try one more. So if let's say in group B, 
So I want to create material again. So this is again World War II materials for Group B. And I think for Group B, we, I wanted them to look at Hiroshima. I just go back again to, to Google Arts and Culture. I look for Hiroshima. Wait for it to load. And then there's a place, but there's also a collection. So this one is very interesting. Because it shows us all the things that happened there. So I'm going to get this link, put it in my classroom, add that here, and then again, I make sure that I assign it to specific students. So kanina, it's 1, 10, 11, and 13. So now I want my next set of students. I choose that topic again so that they don't lose it. I'll probably add a description here, and then I post. And you can do that now for almost all of the other works that you have. Okay, let's do one more. Okay, so again, that's material. So that's World War II uh, material for Group C. And for Group C, I wanted them to look at women and war and the effect of women at war. And then I go back to arts and culture. I search for that. Wait for it to load. And then I get to see, this one in particular is the one that I like because it's centered in the Philippines. And the photos actually are of Manila during World War II. So if you want to browse it for it, for example, you can see how it was it's actual pictures and even stories, for example, of how women were there during World War II. Since I want this, I'm going to just copy this link again using this. I go back to my classroom, put that link in, assign it to the next set of students. Of course, I'm using this arbitrarily, but you have to be very purposive when you assign it. Again, make sure that the topic is chosen so that it's archived properly in your classroom. And then I post. So now all my expert groups, or except group D, you know, because I haven't done that. Now all my expert groups now have access to two types of material. One is links to World War II materials, which is a massive or greater scheme of, uh, of that particular time. And then a specific angle to that particular time. Now, if we go back to the slides that I've created for them, what they need to do is this. They need to go to the links that have been assigned to their groups, and then they take note of what is the important information. Vital is that I will give them time to share with their groups and discuss which notes to put in their slide. That action of giving them the material, both the macro and the small focused one, allows them to have that discussion. Ano ba talaga yung important na kailangan nilang i-share? And then they create their slide. So each of them start typing here what it is that they want to share. Now, this particular uh, activity, normally I give them about an hour, an hour and a half, depending on the time that I have. So sometimes that's cut between different school days. But what I would like for them to do, it's important for me that in their discussions, they're able to show what it is that they think happened during that time. And so the discussion becomes richer and really fact-based because that's really important when looking at historical history in that perspective. And so they also decide what it is that they report. At the end of it, all the groups will have to present what it is that they have found about that particular theme or World War II, and then they get to share what it is that they know. You also have the option actually to allow them to move from one group to another. So let's say group A has three, and then uh, also has group B, so let's say equal groups. I cut them up into different groups and then they share. Okay, so that way they're able to learn also from the other experts. So you have other options. And then they can show their slides and use the slides as a guide. So it becomes a presentation. And therefore your discussion is no longer up to you, but also what 
knowledge it is that the students have created during their discussions as well. So that's it actually for my uh, app smashing demo. So again, I really encourage you to look at Google Arts and Culture. And apart from all of the things, apart from the fact that you can push it to Google Classroom and you can actually use all the other tools in order to, you know, enrich and learn, there are other materials here. So if, for example, you're not a history teacher, let's say you're a music teacher, you see here, this is about Chopin. And so it's actually a study or material of where, why he's so, um, he's so, uh, he's uh, so popular. Okay, so this is a video. Okay, this is a video about it, and um, you can use it actually for your study of the of of this particular, um, this particular not writer, um, composer. There, sorry. You can also look Van Gogh. So this is the Starry Night, and you can have so many so many other things that you can look at. So, for example, if you're looking at art movements for art, you can do what I did, the expert groups in terms of art movements. Okay, so let's say. Uh, the Renaissance, Modernism, Surrealism, let's say pop art, which is something, ito very interested ako in pop art. I really like Andy Warhol. And uh, so it shows you all the different stories in pop art. Apart from that, it's not just the classics or the things or the other uh, works no, that are um, that are featured here that are considered art. There's also lots of contemporary art that you can take a look at. And so even here, Romy, may, may fashion na siya or fashion, the love affair between fashion and art. So there are many places that you can do. Meron ditong isa na sobrang gusto ko on street art kasi it, it actually teaches kids na, you know, art is everywhere. So it's not just limited to what it is that you're studying. So may classes, pero meron din tayong contemporary art that you can find. Um, ang isa pang gusto ko is in the idea of places. Okay. If you look at the places, so you can look at it. So let's say if we go to Denmark, it just shows you here. Tapos, ito, ito yung pinakagusto ko. You can look at it how it's organized. And I want it organized by time. So it can show you the history of the country in photos in that particular time. It's just taking a while to load, pero puno yan. Puno yang ilalim. So it's really important. It really is a good place for you to look at if you're looking for primary uh, primary um, documents or primary text to for your children to study. Okay? And that's it for my app smashing demo. I hope may natutunan kayo at meron kayo nakita. Really explore Google Arts and Culture. There's a lot of things there, not just for history, music, and art, but also for all other teachers that might want to use the material for their classes. So thank you very much. If you have questions, please feel free to send them over through the comment section. Thank you. All right, Miss Maan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Jen, could I say that was game changing in history in the making? Yes, Miss Pam. And nakakatuwa lang talagang isipin that ano yung dami kong na-realize na when we use Google Classroom and Slides, it they actually offer us numerous and innovative ways to make learning really interactive and collaborative that even when our students stay at the comfort of their homes, the yes. connection from their teachers is still possible. Diba? Right. Tamang tama sa distance learning na kinakaharap natin ngayon. And from the term mm -hmm. itself, Pam, classroom. So as teachers, para na rin natin silang kasama sa digital classroom nga lang, but same goal, di ba? You wouldn't feel na nasa digital classroom sila. It's like oh, you're oh. still with them face to face, but in a different scenario, with a different feel, with all the technology and that. Ang lupit, Miss Maan. Yes. Pero ako talaga, ano no, kasi dati hindi siya arts and culture, no, it was a different platform. Pero really, mm -hmm. teachers, ang dami niyong pwedeng makuha dito. Um, alam mo, when I shared this with my teacher, ang tawag nila sa kanila, parang siya ng black hole of material. Kasi sobrang dami mong pwedeng makuha from uh, from Google Arts and Culture. And it's available for free. So, That's the big hindi word. Hindi lang. <laughs> ba? The free free teachers. It's free for you. So, pwede pwede nyo po siyang gamitin. So, F-R-E-E, -E, pwede pwede gamitin. Free, libre. Ayan. Yeah. So, I'm looking at the comment section and was like looking for some questions or anything. But I guess, Miss Maan, napakalinaw ng sharing mo. Uh -huh. 
right? Well, ano lang, if and when lang, nanalitang kanilang timing for the question, is there any possible way they could reach you out or what? Yes, you can reach me through uh, GEG Ortigas. I'll put the links, uh, sige, as always, I'll put the link in the, <laughs> but share na lang po sa chat box. Uh, this is the link to GEG Ortigas. And then you can find me on Twitter. It's Maan SDG. So you can just tweet or private message or direct message me. I'll definitely answer. I answer naman most of the time. There are other teachers, I think, from DepEd or have connections with GEG that I really don't know personally but have reached out to me. So hello sa inyo. <laughs> yes. So that's gonna be like a tweet and a DM away, right? Ayan. Alam mo, yeah. may nabasa ako one of the comments one of the many comments sa ating chat box, sabi niya, panalo talaga sa timing ang topic na diniska. So, thank you so much po. Uh, malaking tulong ito sa lahat ng viewers, particularly sa mga teachers na kagaya namin. So, hindi kami lahat aware actually, no? So, ito talaga uh, na-enlighten kami ngayong hapon. Maraming salamat yes. po ulit. And it's a great uh -oh. no way to start the afternoon, ba? Timing na timing sa tamang panahon sa akmang pagkakataon. Ganun na ganun. Okay. So, Miss Maan, again, thank you once more for sharing those to us. And maybe soon, we could have more with you. Longer session, I believe. Uh, always welcome. Okay. Thank See you, you so much. All right. So, we say bye for now, but that wouldn't be the end uh, for us na ma mapapakinggan ulit natin si Miss Maan. But this yeah. time, we're going to be making way for another um speaker. Grabe tong session natin na to, no, Jen? Punong-puno ng mga speaker. Oo, oh, actually, kahit tayo nagugulat din, no? Madami rin tayong natututunan. Mm -hmm. Ganun daw talaga. Minsan, ang pagtatuto, nakukuha mo sa ibang tao. Kailangan yeah. mong makinig dahil sila mas nakakakita kung ano ang para sa'yo. Ay, gusto ko yun. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, kaya naman, this time, we would all have the chance to listen to our next speaker. So if you would allow me, Jen, I would introduce this man, okay? Na he's one of um, OER National Core Leader, Microsoft Education Ambassador, a graduate of BSED General Science at the Philippine Normal University in North Luzon Campus, a Google Certified Educator Level 1, Microsoft Office Specialist, Microsoft Certified Educator, Microsoft Innovative Educator, Adobe Creative Educator Level 1. Uh, currently, he's teaching at Patel National High School, SDO Santiago City, and an EdTech specialist as well. Ayan, kanina nakausap na natin siya, Jen. And gusto ko nga sana siyang makita face-to-face. -face. Ayan. At makakasak din face-to-face sa pagtatrabaho. I've heard a lot of good things about this man. Mm -hmm. Okay. And with that, alright, so to our uh, participants and friends, Okay, our next speaker who would be generous enough to discuss and share on how to engage with hyperdocs, forms, and drawings. If you're ready, let's welcome Sir er Earl Aaron Villanosa, a virtual clap. Hello, po, ma'am. Hi. Hi. Hello, po. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Bakit nga ba, pa? Parang medyo naging energetic ka lalo, ah. Ah, oo, sa bagay. Okay. He was really very kind enough to assist tayong dalawa agad. Diba, sir? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Si, si sir pala yung boses na naririnig ko kanina. Mm -hmm. Now oh, mas maganda know. talaga kapag ka nakikita yung face. Oo, kasi ibig sabihin, harap-harapan mo na rin nakikilala agad. At ngayon, oh, sa pagkakatitig pa lang natin kay sir, alam na alam na agad natin na marami tayong matututuhan ngayong araw. So, sir, we're giving the floor to you. Sige po. Uh, so, thank you po, Ma'am Pam and Ma'am uh, Jen. And hopefully po, um, malinaw po yung mic ko at uh, may deliver ko ng hindi naglalag yung presentation kasi uh, medyo kumulimlim dito nung ngayong hapon pa. At biglang naglalag naman na ako. Sana hindi. Ayan. So, uh, uh, pasensya na sa angle ng camera na sa baba kasi. Now, um, I'm going to share my screen na po. So, yeah. Thank you po sa ating webinar director. Yeah. So, um, 
we'll be talking about uh, a topic today, which is uh, engage with hyperdocs. Uh, and then gagamitin po natin ang docs, forms, and drawings. Pero hindi lang po yun, yung makikita natin uh, mamaya. Kasi uh, itong hyperdocs na to talagang uh, interactive. Uh, uh, like, kasi, uh, ano, ano bang term? Nag-refresh din ako dito eh. Yan, yung siguro yung term. Nag-refresh din ako kasi um, I already made uh, a hyperdoc. Siguro matagal na rin. Um, hindi ko na hindi ko na siya na-update. Pero I, I've tried creating na rin. Then, uh, yun, nung sabi, binigay sa akin topic nito, ay, kailangan ko mag-refresh para naman may deliver ko to na maayos. Especially sa ating mga uh, teachers na manunod ngayon. And hopefully, uh, makatulong itong hyperdocs na to sa uh, sa inyo, especially uh, sa mga students nyo, uh, syempre to engage them. Yeah. Now, uh, in our uh, presentation ngayon, so this is our objectives. The first one is to define hyperdocs. Yeah. And the next one is to explore hyperdoc samples. So we'll be looking at uh, different hyperdocs. May mga samples tayo. And then we're going to link uh, packages in Hyperdocs and uh, create a sample Hyperdocs. Yeah. So, gagawa rin tayo ng sample talaga natin. Kasi, um, para naman makita natin kung uh, paano ba nilalagay yung mga laman nitong Hyperdocs na ko. Yeah. Now, so here, I have my own. Ayan. This is a slide Hyperdoc, actually. Ito, itong... itong ginawa kong sample na to. This is a slide hyperdocs na uh, hopefully uh, matutunan nyo rin na gawin. Uh, madali lang naman siya. Pag na-demo naman na natin yung paggawa ng hyperdocs sa uh, dito, sa ating Google Docs. Yan. Uh, dito, makukuha nyo na rin yung idea paano ba ginawa itong hyperdocs na to. Uh, yung iba kasi, uh, nakakatawa nga iba yung gumagawa nito pag nung nung gumawa ng gumawa kami ng sample nito yung iba a uh, very advanced na yung yung hyperdocs nila yung iba uh, mukha siyang uh, mukha siyang game ganun mukhang game ang, ang ano niya yan ito rin naman uh, ito naman parang uh, may 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 mga task dito na kailangan gawin yan so pagkakita pa lang ng estudyante natin yan sa sa mga ganyan uh, pag nakita nila syempre matutuwa sila diyan yan kasi uh, uy ano to di ba pag ginan nila so let's let's look at hyperdocs na uh, so we have here uh, the first one. What is hyperdocs? Yan. So pag when I move this here, yan. yan may kita nyo. Pag clinic ko, yan. Uh, pag clinic ko, yan. So lalabas ito. Uh, it will make a copy. Yan. Uh, sa gitna pa. Yan. So nakikita naman. Yan. Just checking. So it will make a copy kagad nung nakalink sa kanya na material. So pag click ko yung make a copy, Ituturo ko rin mamaya yan kung paano nagkakaroon ng, ng pag-clinic yung material is magkakaroon ng make a copy. And then napans napansin nyo, yan, automatic copy of what is hyperdocs. Yan. So we have here now, yan. so pag-clinic ng bata yan, ito kagad yung may kita niya. So what is a hyperdocs? Now so, i-ano lang natin. Uh, what do you call this? Ulit lang po ah. Um, hindi sumusunod yung mouse ko ng tama. Ayan. Naglalag. Ayan. So, ayan. 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 Okay na. Okay na. Medyo ano eh. Nahuhuli kanina. So, what is hyperdocs? So, hyperdocs are digital lesson plans uh, that are designed uh, by teachers and given to students. Uh, they provide access to students to all content and learning in one organized digital space. Ayan. And hyperdocs shift instruction by giving students uh, the content to explore uh, before direct instruction. Yeah. And by asking students to apply also their uh, learning using four Cs. Yeah. Uh, take note pa, uh, 21st century skills for learning, ito, ito importante sa mga bata ngayon, uh, the four Cs, ito yung kailangan nila para matuto sila ng 21st century skills natin ngayon, which is, the first one is critical thinking, then communication, collaboration, and creativity. Yes, uh, they can do that kapag uh, gumawa tayo ng hyperdocs. Yeah. And then Hyperdocs is a transformative interactive Google Doc uh, replacing the worksheet method of delivering instruction in the ultimate uh, change age, uh, 
uh, and it is also the ultimate change agent in the blended learning classroom. Yeah. Uh, especially ngayon, pag gumagamit na talaga tayo ng blended learning, uh, nagiging interactive siya kung dinidesign natin yung uh, etong module na to as hyperdocs. Yan. Or yung, yung kanina, yung presentation ko, uh, it is already designed as a hyperdoc. Yan. Slide, uh, slides lang, lang, nga lang ginamit ko. Now, and then, uh, by the way, ito yung reference ko, yung pinagkuha nung ko, yan. So, naka-indicate din dyan. So, pag, pag ganit ko rin yan, yan, nakita nyo, may nakalink sa kanya na reference yan. So, yan. yan. So, when I go there, yan, dediretso siya dito kung saan nang galing yung material. So, yung bata, yan, pwede pa siyang mag-explore ulit. Yan. Kasi nilink ko yung uh, kung saan galing itong uh, reference na to. Yan. So, so that's one thing, di ba? Sa, uh, sa atin, di ba, pag when we're giving modules, uh, alam ko nag nagbibigay tayo ng digital modules sa mga bata. But the digital modules na binibigay natin sa kanila is in PDF form, di ba? And then, uh, andun lang sila, nagbabasa lang sila, nakakulong pa rin sila dun sa module na yun, uh, na PDF form. Now, the beauty of HyperDocs, yan, um, uh, tama nga sinabi ng speaker natin kanina, na you can actually create infinite or uh, black hole of information here, infinite information links uh, sa mga ganitong klaseng, uh, mga ganitong klaseng material like, like the HyperDocs. Now, another one here, there's also a link video. Yan. Yan. Papakita natin mamaya kung paano ginagawa po yan. So when I click here, ayan, uh, nilink ko silang dalawa. So kung, kahit ano i-click nung bata. So when when I click here, ayan, dadiretso siya. So, ayan po siya. Week 5 of this course. This is our final lesson together. And I'm excited to introduce a new topic. Um, so we're going to be talking their digital. Ayan. Uh, so uh, thank you po sa owner ng video na to. Uh, so, kasi ginamit ko siya. So, we have here, yan, si Sir Jan uh, Sowash. So, thank you, sir. So, it is linked here. Ganun din dito. Uh, nilink ko rin dito yung, uh, yung video na to para kung ano yung click ng bata. Ba? Pag-clinic ko rin yan. Yeah. So, yan. Ito rin siya. Okay. So, the same. So, that's one thing. So, so bukod sa, sa text, yan, bakit ko uh, ginawa ito? Para makita rin natin na bukod sa text, Pwede rin tayong mag-link sa mga images natin uh, ng mga materials. Yan. And take note, uh, depende sa package natin or sa package ng materials ang gagamitin natin. So, importante na dapat alam din natin yung mga package ng material, materials na gagawin natin. Uh, nang sa gayon, pag uh, ginawa natin itong hyperdocs, hindi tayo mahihirapan. So, that's, that's one thing. So, and then, kung napansin nyo dito, may notes part. Yan. Para talaga sa mga sudyante. Like for example, uh, kung, what do you call this? Kung uh, nabasa na nila to, yan. they can actually uh, make notes. Yan. And then, uh, the good thing is, sa kanila to, kasi nag-create sila ng copy, yung notes na to. And, and if they want, yan, they, they can share it to you. Yan. Yan. Pwede nilang i-share yan. Or, if they have uh, uh, groups, yan, mga kaklase nila, yan, they can share it to to people. Yan, sa mga kaklase nila. Like for example, yan, si, si Ma'am Weng, yan, i-share ko sa kanya. Yan. And then, uh, magay natin dito. Yan. Share natin kay Sir James. Share din natin kay Sir Eugene. Yan. Yung mga kasama ko sa ICT. Hello po sa inyo. Share natin kay Sir Ian. Yan. And siyempre kay Sir Christian. Yan. Share natin yung mga yan. Tama ba? Parang mali. Yeah. So, so ganun siya. So, you can share it. Uh, Na-discard ko, sorry. Uh, but you can share. Pero once na ma-share natin yan, once na ma-share natin, we just click done. Pag na-click na natin yan, ma-share na sa kanila yan. Kahit kayo mamayang na lang muna, share natin. So, and then, uh, send natin. Uh, you can choose either editor sila. Siyempre, kung magko-collaborate kayo, yan, pwede nyo gawing editor. Pero kung si teacher gusto nyo, uh, kung isi-share naman kay teacher, kung gusto nyo magko-comment lang siya, yan. Pwede yung commenter siya. Yan. So, since gusto ko mag-collab kami ni ma'am, yan. So, gagawin kong, yan. Sa, 
isesend ko sa kanya. So, ma-access niya na to. Pwede na kami mag-take or mag-notes ditong dalawa. Yan. Ganon din sa mga classmates ko. So, that's that's the beauty of uh, HyperDocs. So, hopefully, uh, na-define natin ang HyperDocs. Uh, kung, kung ano ito, yan. Pero, syempre, hindi lang naman definition dapat ang i-check natin. Syempre, dapat uh, makita natin ano ba itsura or ano bang design ng mga HyperDocs natin. Kasi ito is just a simple one na magagamit nga naman ng sudyante. Ayan. And then by the way, kung napansin nyo, medyo pinalitan ko yung background nito. Ayan. Pinalitan ko yung background para medyo mas appealing sa mata. Di ba? Uh, ewan ko kung, kung medyo boring yung, yung dating ng kulay. Pero uh, ito kasi yung feel kong kulay, no? Kaya, kaya ito yung nilagay ko. Ayan. So, ayan. pwede rin natin palitan yan. So, so mamaya, tuturo ko rin yan sa inyo. So, next. So going back in my presentation. So let's look at what do hyperdocs look like. So ano ba itsura nila? Uh, so when I click this, uh, by the way, I can also click this yan. Dalawa silang nilink ko. Yan. Kasi sabi ko sa inyo, pwede ako mag-link ng uh, material sa mga images or text. Yan. Dito, uh, both. Both yung mga ginamit ko dito. And then, if you see here, gumamit din ako ng Bitmoji yan. Uh, you can add this in your Chrome store. Yan. Magandaan dito sa bit Bitmoji ng, uh, na, nasa Chrome store natin. Uh, Nag-generate talaga siya ng, ng kung ano yung gusto kong hanapin natin. Yan. Yan. Sinar, uh, tinipe ko lang yan. Like, ba ito? Uh, Naglagay lang ako ng question yan. sa, sa uh, dito, sa, sa Bitmoji extension na to. Yan. So, lumabas na itsura na yan. yan. Like, for example, ito, search naman yan. So, ganun siya. So, so going back. Yan. So, ito na naman. Um, sabi niya, make a copy ulit. Nag-automatic siyang make a copy. Hindi, kung napansin nyo, di ba hindi siya yung, di ba, di ba pag nagli-link tayo minsan, pag, ano lang, pag open is mismong yung ano nang mag-open. Yung file na mismo. Pero ito, ginawa kong automatic ng make a copy siya. So, another one. So, yan. So, what do hyperdocs look like? So, that's a question a while ago. Now, Hyperdocs are digital lessons designed by teachers yan, and given to students. Uh, and what platform you choose to design them is uh, on is up to you. So, depende kung anong platform mo, mo sila gagamitin. Uh, kung anong platform mo siya i-design. Now, uh, how you choose to uh, to get them to students is also up to you. So, depende rin kung paano natin sila isi-share sa mga students. Uh, you can add them, syempre. For example, sa Google Classroom, kung meron kayong Google Classroom, yan. Pwede nyo isama tong HyperDocs doon. Para yung material natin, hindi lang siya simply reading material, but actually, uh, an interactive material for students. And then, uh, the most popular platform use, ayan, is Google Docs and Google Sites. Ayan, kung napansin nyo. So, and then, pag napansin nyo, dito sa Google Docs and Google Slides, naka-blue siya. Ibig sabihin, uh, may link din sa kanya. So, pag... Ano ba, kung hindi alam ni estudyante, ano ba Google Docs, ano ba Google Slides? So, pag-click niya yan, yan. Uh, lalabas itong uh, YouTube up, video. Is... Yan, lalabas yung YouTube video. Uh, Beginner's Guide to Google Docs. So, that's another thing yan. So, yun ang kagandahan dito, di ba? Kung may mga unfamiliar uh, unfamiliar things sa kanila, yan. you can add this one yan, sa kanila para mas, uh, mas maging engaging or mas maintindihan nila. Like, for example, Google Slides. So, Ano gumamit ng Google Slides? Like, for example, tanong nila yun. Ang alam ko, PowerPoint. Parehas lang kaya siya ng PowerPoint. So, pag-clinic nila yan, yan, may tutorial din. And today's video, I'm going to... So, nakapansin nyo. Yan. So, it is linked there. So, mamaya, papakita nga natin kung paano yung mga yan. Now, uh, continuing. Yan. So, napansin nyo, may notes pa rin dyan. Yan. So, pwede pa rin sila maglagay ng notes. Pag na ano nila. And then, uh, I added some additional resources. Yan. Which is, uh, create a hyperdoc. So, pag-clinic ko yan, so, tingnan natin kung ano ano niya. So, I'm redirected to TC, uh, TC hyperdocs. Ayan. TCEA hyperdocs. Ayan. So, here, it teaches you how to create a hyperdocs. Ayan. Ito. Itong link na to. So, so bukod dito, ayan, di ba? What do hyperdocs look like? Ayan. Uh, diniscuss niya. But but furthermore, etong additional resources na to, ayan, di ba? Pag clinic nung ng estudyante or clinic nung uh, binigyan mo ng material, it can uh, it will actually be linked here. Ayan, so ito siya. So here is a site yan where we can uh, actually uh, see paano ba gumagawa ng hyperdoc. So sabi niya, 
create a, a hyperdoc. The first one is determine your learning objectives. So, ito yung una. Yan. Uh, pag nag-search kayo ng iba't ibang mga resources, ito rin talaga yung uh, mostly. Kaya ito yung pinili ko. Kasi mostly, ito yung uh, binibigay nila na idea paano gumawa ng hyperdocs. Yan. So, first one, sabi ko nga, determine your learning objective. So, medyo palaking nga natin. Yan, para hindi tayo ano. Yan. Determine your learning objectives. Then, the next one is select which uh, cycle uh, you will use. Yan. Ano, anong cycle ba? So, and then, pansin nyo, may, may mga link na rin dyan. Hindi na tayo ma may rapan. And then, select your packaging. Yan. So, an mga packaging, ito yung mga tools na gagamitin mo. Like, for example, gusto mo ba uh, ng Google Docs na, na packaging ng HyperDocs mo na nandyan na lahat? Google Slides, yan. Google Forms, Sites, Maps, yan. So, nakadepende sa atin. But take note, sabi kanina, ang most popular na ginagamit, itong dalawa, Google Docs and Google Slides as a uh, HyperDoc. And then, build the workflow. Ayan. Like, for example, ito, yan. Parang yan, ito. Pasensya na kung palipat-lipat po ako ng, uh, ng tab. Ayan. Uh, workflow, ayan. Kung napansin nyo, may workflow para sa mga uh, gustong matuto ng HyperDocs. Ayan, di ba? Uh, Dinefine natin. Pinakita natin kung ano yung tura niya. Then, may checkpoint part pa yan mamaya. Uh, kung, limbawa, uh, as a short quiz, siyempre, para ma malaman kung naintindihan ba nila or hindi. And then, siyempre, may workshop din. And then, siyempre, ayan. Finally, ayan. tapos mo na hyperdocs. Ayan. So, balik tayo. So, build the workflow. Ayan. Yung design natin, siyempre. Uh, design your uh, design your hyperdocs, siyempre, Ano ba yung magiging itsura niya? Then, uh, evaluate your hyperdocs. Yeah. So, ito yung mostly dapat ating tandaan. Yeah. Pero dito pa lang, una pa lang, syempre, determine your learning objective. Yeah. Ito, dapat tandaan lagi natin yan, yung first part na yan. So, that's uh, the additional source. Now, now, besides from the additional source that we have, uh, we also have, yeah. uh, pakiramdam ko, Pati ito, maliit kanina eh. Yan, sige, palakihin natin para yan, hindi mahirapan yung mga audience natin. Yan. yan. So, yan. So, hopefully, medyo ano na. Yan. So, first one, we have science and sample ito. And then, uh, pag-clinic ko yan, yan. Yan. So, automatic, gagawa siya ng copy. Yan. By the way, uh, galing ito kanina sa hyperdoc.co, yung, yung first na pinuntahan ko kanina ng link, yan. Uh, galing itong sample na to. So, kung napansin nyo, this is a sample sa science, yan. So, napansin nyo, yan. Uh, may learning objective siya. Siyempre, alam niya. Then, ito yung workflow na ginawa niya, yan. Tapos yung design, nandiyan na rin, yan. So, napansin nyo, first one, yan. Uh, engage part. So, once na-click yan, yan, pansin nyo, may nakalink din sa, sa picture, yan. So, pag-click ng bata, automatic, yung nakalink na yan, makapanood niya. Yeah. And then next, yan. click natin. Kung papansin natin, yan. may commercial. Click lang natin. Ayan. So, pag tinig na natin, yan. So, um umpisa pa lang, umpisa pa lang, di ba? Ang ganda na ng pasok sa, sa lesson natin kasi nagpakita ka na kagad ng video presentation sa bata. And then next, yan. For next one, and to explore, yan. Uh, ito yung kanyang activity sa explore. Kung papansin natin, yan. Kung napansin nyo, hindi siya nag-make a copy, no? Yan, hindi siya nag-make a copy. Uh, it's okay kung ayaw nyo mag-make a copy. Yan. Pero instruct nyo yung sudyante nyo kung gusto nyo uh, mag-submit sila lang separate, yan. Pwedeng ganun ang gawin nila. So here, yan. Kung napansin nyo, yan. Ito yung activity niya. Sa, ano yun? sa explore, yan. And then, yan. Yan siya. Yan. Click, uh, click here to know the standards. So, pag clinic, uh, yan. So, ito siya. So, may nakalink din bawat yan sa activity niya. And then, napansin nyo, meron din siyang notes. Yan. Tulad nung pinakita ko kanina, may notes, di ba? So, pwedeng mag-note na dito yung bata. Kung ano yung uh, nakuha niya dito sa, sa activity or kung ano yung naintindihan niya sa activity. Yan. And then, choose a topic to research. Yan. So, so yan. Pansin nyo, may link din dyan. Yan. 
So ang nilink niya naman dito, ayan, is a uh, Google slide. So ayan. So pwede rin tayo mag-link ng mga ganyan. So ito na yung uh, topic nila. So ayan, pansin niyo, groupings na sila. Ayan. So, ayan. so next. And then apply, ayan. Ang ganda pansin niyo. And infographic using, ayan. Pwede rin sila mag-link mismo ng site na pwede nilang uh, ipa-visit sa estudyante, di ba? Pwede sila mag-link ng site. Like for example, kung gusto mo i-link dito yung Canva, uh, gusto mo sila paggawin ng digital poster, you, you can use Canva or uh, Adobe Spark. Yan. Uh, sa mga ano nila, sa infographic nila. So, so tignan natin ha. Take note. Ano yung mga nakalink dito? Balikan natin. So, just a temperature check lang po sa atin. So, una, di ba, naglagay siya ng video. And then, meron siya dito activity na, na Google Docs. Yan. Clinic, uh, clinic niya, uh, nilink niya. And then, inside the activity, may mga uh, nakalink din na, uh, na sources na pwedeng uh, puntahan ng bata para mas maintindihan. And then, yan, nag-link din siya ng Google Slide. So, pwede rin mag-link ng Google Slide. And then, isa pa is uh, an online application or uh, an application na pwedeng gamitin ng uh, sudyante. So, so ganun yung mga pwede nating i-link. And then, yan. And then, one person from uh, from the group needs to fill out this form. So, pag-clinic natin, yan. Pansin nyo, may nakalink din na Google Form, yan. Pero hindi yata, <laughs> hindi na yata functional, yan. Yan. So, ayan. So, and then, para naman makita nila yung response sa mga creation nila, yan. Binigyan din sila. Yan, di ba? Yan. So, So napansin niyo bukod sa ah uh, dito application na pwedeng gamitin yan. Pwede rin si Google Form. And then reflect on your work on a 90 second flip grid. Eh si flip, si, si flip grid naka ano rin siya. Naka-insert din siya. Which is uh, mama ituturo po sa atin ng isa na speaker yung ah uh, uh, teacher natin paano niya pa ginagamit itong flip grid na to. Eh pagtinik natin Pasensya na medyo dumitigay din ako. <laughs> ayan. So, ayan. And then, ayan, uh, to extend, syempre, ayan, naglagay siya ng, ayan, no, ng laro sa mga bata. Ayan. Online game discussion. Ayan. So, so that is the design of, ayan. kung napansin nyo, isang page lang siya, pero pag, pag uh, clinic ng bata or pag uh, in-explore ng bata, uh, sang katutak na information ang daladala nito sa kanya. So, hopefully nakakuha tayo ng idea paano ba tayo nagde-design ng ating Uh, pag dito, hyperdocs. Ayan. And then, uh, close natin. Ayan. Let's look at math. Ayan. Tignan din naman natin itong math. So, and make a copy ulit. Ayan. Ayan. Hindi pa tagal mag-load. Ayan. So, dito naman, ito naman siya. So, geometry with uh, with coding, robot, robots, and more. Ayan. So, dito pa lang. Ayan. May link na kagad siya. Ayan. So, naglagay siya ng instructions. So, napansin nyo? Ayan, naglagay siya kagad ng instructions. And then, ito yung discover part. Ayan. And then, ayan. napansin nyo, ang ginagawa niya naman per uh, uh, per table. Ayan. Magkakahiwalay na table ang ginawa niya. Ayan. Itong math natin. So, so ayan. So, kung mapapansin nyo, ayan. still mga activity niya, nandiyan pa rin. So, may nakalink din na video. Ayan. Pansin nyo, image ng video. Pag-clinic ng bata, ayan. Kukuha niya. So, 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 all in all, ayan. Ito yung mga sample design natin ng uh, hyperdocs sa pwede natin gawin sa sudyante. Now, uh, since may idea na tayo, uh, ano ba yung mga mga hyperdocs natin or sample design natin, uh, pag nag, syempre, mamaya sa workshop natin, dapat may makuha rin tayo. Di ba? Na, na idea or makagawa rin tayo ng sarili nating uh, hyperdocs. Yeah. Now, uh, going back, yeah, so close ko na yan. Close ko rin yan. So going back to my presentation. So checkpoint, yan. Yeah. Uh, sa checkpoint, papansin nyo kung ano yung insert ko dito. Yeah. Google Form. Yeah. Ito lang mamay laman ng checkpoint. Hindi ko na siya, inano, hindi ko na siya ano, uh, nilagyan ng questions. Gusto ko lang ipakita dito sa sa hyperdocs ko na slides ay pwede ang Google Form na ilagay. Um, 
pakita ko rin paano yan gumagana mamaya. And yung slight features ni Google Form sa inyo, papakita rin ako mamaya. So, ayan. So, napansin nyo, ayan. Uh, it requires, uh, ayan, yung first name, ayan. And then, a name of school, and then, in date. Yan lang. Yan lang laman. Uh, it's like an attendance lang. Ayan. Ayan. So, so, kung gusto nyo, ayan, dito, halimbawa, di ba, nilagay ko yung checkpoint dito. If you, if you want, pwede yung ilagay nyo sa unahan, palitan nyo ng attendance sa mga bata. Halimbawa, yung mga bata gusto nyo uh, malaman kung sino ba yung nag-check na itong hyperdocs nyo. Sino nag-check or sinong uh, uh, tag dito, nag-aral. Yan. Pwede yung lagay nyo. Uh, in a form of attendance, ito. Yan. Sa una, lagay nyo attendance. Yan. Then, start tayo sa design nyo. Yan. Para sa mga sudyante natin. So, so yan. So, I'll be showing later paano ba yan. And then, uh, in the workshop part, syempre, yan na. Ito na, gagawa na tayo. So, you can actually follow me uh, sa workshop natin para hindi kayo mahirapan sa paggagawa na kayo ng sarili nyo hyperdocs. Uh, buksan ko lang yung ito. Yan. Dapat pala hindi ko naklinos. Kukuha kasi yung mga sample din dito. Yan. Open lang natin. Sige. Habang kayo po nag-open din ng inyong uh, Google Docs, yan. Yan. O open ko lang din yung mga materials na kailangan ko para naman uh, magamit ko din mamaya sa papagawa natin, uh, sa gagawin nating hyperdocs. Yeah. And then, ito na rin. Yeah. Yan na. Gamitin na natin yan. Yan. So, uh, in the workshop part, yan, pag clinic ko yan, yan. So, this is my own copy ng aking hyperdocs. Yan. Siyempre, yan. Um, dapat, alam na natin yung objectives natin, di ba? So, sabihin ko, sa, sa, uh, ko sa akin, objectives ko yan, is to create a hyperdox. Yan. So, so, paano nga ba? Paano nga ba natin sisimulan? If you want uh, to change yung background natin para medyo uh, appealing yung dating sa mga sudyante natin or, or sa mga gusto mag-check ng hyperdox natin, you just go first to file. Yan. Click lang natin yung file, then page setup. Ngiting ko pa, ah. go to file, then page setup. Yan. And then yung page color, yan, pwede niyo palitan. Yan. Siguro kung saan ba ako? Ano bang ano bang gusto kong kulay ngayon? Yan. Siguro dito, uh, dito ako, yan. Ano bang kulay yan? Hindi ko na maaninag. <laughs> yan, uh, light corn flower blue. Yan, yan siya. And then uh Siguro gusto kong gawin na uh, ang margin ko medyo maluwang. Ayun. Gawin ko 0.5.5.5.5. Ah. And then okay. Ayun. Pansin niyo medyo lumuwang na siya. So, eto na yung kulay ng document ko ngayon. Ayan. Hindi na siya plain white, di ba? Medyo mas ano na siya. So, sabihin natin una, syempre, lagay mo yung topic mo. Ayun. Ano ba yung topic mo? Sabi natin, creating hyperdocs. So, ganyan. And then, if you want, yan, pwede nating palitan ng font. Yan. Yan. Kung wala kang gustong font dito, yan, punta ka sa more fonts. Yan. Sa akin, lalagay ko na yung uh, bookman. Yan. And then, uh, this one. Yan. For the sake of presentation, uh, lalakihan ko na lang siya. For the sake of my presentation, yan, lalakihan ko siya. And then, isi-center ko siya. Yan. So, yan yung topic ko. So, topic, creating hyperdocs. So, ganyan siya. So, or, siguro kahit wala na yung word na topic, tanggalin ko na lang. Yan na lang. So, yan na. Creating hyperdocs. So, yan siya. And then, mapapansin nyo, uh, galaw ng galaw to. Automatically, kasi, sinesave niya lahat ng gawa mo uh, pag dito ka gumagawa. Then, yan. Lagyan natin 24. Ayan, siguro 24. Then, sabihin natin maglagay tayo dito ng, ayan, yung question kanina. Ito. What is a hyperdoc? Ayan. Ayan, yung first question kanina eh. So, lagyan lang natin dito. Uh, Mag-insert ako ng table. Ayan. And then, copy ko lang to. What is a hyperdoc? Ayan. 
And then paste ko siya. So, yan siya. And then sabihin ko, notes pa rin ito. Kasi gusto kong maglagay sila ng notes dito. Yung mga mag access na itong file ko. Para uh, kapag um, may gusto silang matandaan, syempre, magtitake notes sila. Then tab lang. Yan. Para meron, para lumabas yung uh, isang part pa ng table natin. Then, ganun din. Uh, ito kasi, itong reference ko. Yan, pag-clinic ko kasi. Yan, diretso na ako dito muna sa reference. Yan. Uh, if you want, uh, saan na? Ito, workshop sample. If you want to, syempre, make your own uh, definition of hyperdocs, yan. Uh, you can get the G's here, yung kung ano yung mga importante, and then ilagay natin dito. Yan. Yung akin, hindi ko, uh, ni-reward ko lang din yung iba dito. Nag-reward lang din ako uh, para, il para ilagay siya dito. It's, it, uh, my definition came from here. Yan. And then uh, ni-reward ko lang siya. Yan. Uh, reward ba? Ang tawag, ang tawag doon. Uh, medyo minodify ko lang siya ng konti. Yan. Minodify ko lang siya ng konti para naman uh, mas... Uh, mas simple, maintindihan. Yan. So, pwedeng ganun din ang gawin nyo. Or siguro, kung gusto nyo, copy nyo na lang. Yan. Ganun din. Pwede rin naman. So, sa akin, since ito na yung ginawa ko, yan. copy ko lang siya. Copy ko lang. Pero sa inyo, sabi ko nga, if dito mang gagaling, you need to copy it here. Yan. Kung gusto nyo, uh, dyan ang galing na. And then, paste. Yan. So, yan siya. So, ganun siya. And then, ah, uh, Ano yung website niya kanina? Yan. Website niya. Yan. Ito yung reference ko. www.hyperdocs.co.co Yan. Lagay natin. So, docs.co Kung papansin nyo, yan. walang nakalagay na link. Yan. Kahit na uh, tinipe ko na siya. So, paano tayo maglalagay ng link? Yan. So, paliitin ko lang din to. Yan. Now, to add link, i-highlight natin and then click natin itong uh, link. Ayan, insert link. etong parang chain sa dito. Yan. Nandito po siya katabi ng... Uh, yan, katabi siya netong add comment. Yan. And then highlight color. So, ito siya. So, pag tinik ko yan, yan, ah... Uh, Ayan, nag-automatic siya. <laughs> nag-automatic siya ng link. So, dapat kasi, pag-click ko to, ayan, click ko yan, uh, copy ko yan, then, uh, click ko, ayan, eto siya. So, pag finish ko siya, ayan, and then, apply. Ito na siya. So, pag-click na, ng sudyante, ayan, didiretso na siya dito, ayan, kung saan yung material parehas. So, ulitin ko lang, ha. So, highlight natin, then click natin ito, then i-paste natin kung ano yung uh, link or yung reference natin. Yan. So, ganun siya. So, ganun lang. Then next, uh, I want to add a video. Yan. Siyempre, gusto ko maglagay ng video. So, paano ba yung itong part na to? Yan. So, here, in my uh, hyperdocs again, insert la ako ng Insert table. Yeah. And then, ano nakalagay doon? Watch the video. So, nalagay ko. Watch the video. Then, ganun pa rin. Notes pa rin. Para nung sa ganyan, uh, may notes yung mga uh, sudyante ko. Sulit lang po ah. Init kasi. <laughs> yan. So, here, yan. Get started with hyperdoc. So, yun yung title kasi. So, nalagay ko. Get uh, started uh, with hyper blocks. Yeah. So, ilagay ko na siya dito yan, para hindi maputo namin. So, here, uh, i-click-click ko na to para mapunta ko na yung link. So, ganun pa rin. So, i-copy ko to. Yan, copy ko. Then, uh, highlight ko yan. Then, add link again. Then, try. So, yan na siya. So, that's uh, adding link to text again. Now, 
Ah, uh, paano yung picture kanina? So, anong ginawa ko sa picture? Dito sa picture, yan, naghanap lang ako ng part niya. Yan, ng, ng part niya. Depende sa kung anong gusto mo hanapin na part. Uh, para maging, um, dito? Para maging muka ng video mo. Yung siguro term ko, muka, muka niya. And then, pag, uh, I just use a snipping tool. Yan. And then, yan. Ito lang siya. So, snip ko lang siya. Yan. And then, copy. And then, ito siya. Paste ko siya. Yan. Ito na siya. So, this is our uh, video. I'm sorry. This is the image. Palang pala. Sorry. Hindi pa ito yung video. Sorry. This is our image. Now, uh, gusto ko rin na kapag clinic ng bata to, gusto ko rin magkaroon to ng link. So, ganun pa rin. Pag clinic ko to, yan, dapat i-click ko siya. And then, andito na yung link button ko. And then, ganun ulit. Copy ko. And then, paste. And then, apply. So, the same. Pag ito yung naklik ng bata, ayan, the same pa rin. Makukuha niya yung video. And then, my notes pa rin siya. So, depende sa atin kung paano natin i-design. So, ganun lang kasimple. We just add link sa ating hyperdocs. Ayan. Ayan. Next. Ayan. Nasaan yung isa nating material? Ayan. So, the same here. Ayan. Kung gusto naman natin na uh, maglagay tayo ng, halimbawa, dito tayo, the same pa rin eh, sa text natin. Gusto natin maglagay, halimbawa, definition ng hyperdocs. Ayan. Highlight lang natin yung gusto nating text. Then, link tayo. Ayan. Then, uh, binura ko pala yan. No? Binura ko pala yung sa ano na hyperdocs. Ayan. Binura ko siya. Ayan. So, yan siya. So, uh, link tayo. Kung, uh, open lang natin. Open na natin dito. Yeah. So, ganun. Kung dito naman gusto nyo, yan. highlight nyo lang. Pwede rin ganito ang gawin nyo. Yan. Link. Pwede right click. Or yung ginagawa ko, eto, dito nang gagaling. So, copy ko. Then, link. Ganun lang. Ayan. Kung gusto nyo naman, ayan, yung mga text. Di ba, may unfamiliar sa kanila. Ayan. Di ba, uh, unfamiliar, uh, ginamit nyo yung term na hyperdocs, uh, hindi pa siya, hindi nyo siya dinefine, ginamit nyo lang. Unfamiliar sa kanila. Ayan. Pwede ganun. So, ganun siya. Uh, now, next. What if, uh, gusto ko maglagay, syempre, ng, uh, tulad nung kanina, yung sa science, sa pansin nyo, may Google form, di ba? Meron dun yung, yung mga pwede nilang sagutan. Ayan. Or pwedeng as survey or feedback form. Yan. Pwedeng ganun. Now, paano naman kung gusto ko ng uh, link ng Google Form? Diba? So, let's say, may ang instructions. Uh, importante po pala, pag gumagawa tayo ng hyperdocs, yan, hindi ko yata na ano kanina, may instructions dapat tayo. Yan. May instructions tayo uh, dito mismo sa ginagawa natin, digital module natin. Para sa gayon, alam ng bata yung gagawin niya. Yan, parang yan, watch the video. Yan yung instructions. So, click the uh, form. Uh, natin, to assess your uh, knowledge. Yan, sabihin natin. Sabihin natin may short quiz ka. So, sabihin natin, eto siya. So, lagay ko lang eto na Ah, tawag, ang ita-title natin dito. Ayan. Hyperdox uh, Quiz 1. Ayan. Sabihin natin yan. So, eto. Itong ginawa kong form. Ayan. Ah, open ko pala mismo yung form. Hindi pala ito yung editable. Wait lang. Open natin yung editable na form. Saan na siya? Ang Google form ko. Pagkakin natin siya. And then, ito. Yeah. So, ito. So, this one. So, pag gusto kong i-link doon, uh, yan. Itong, ito. Itong send button. Click ko yan. And then, ito. Click natin. And then, pwede natin i-shorten yung URL kung gusto natin. Or kung gusto nyo i-direct copy, pwede naman. Diba? Sa akin, shorten ko na lang. Then, uh, kakopy ko na lang siya. Yan. Copied na siya. Then, yan. Ililink ko siya dito. So, 
pag finish ko, yeah, then apply. So, ganun siya. So, napansin nyo, hindi na lang siya plain uh, module na, or hindi na lang siya plain digital module sa mga bata. Actually, you're, you're adding uh, something to it na uh, mas matututo pa sa kanila. Uh, mas matututo pa sila. Yan. And then, kagandahan nga dito, yan, they, they can share it. Ayan, pwede sila mag-collaborate. Yun ang isang kagandahan. Yun talaga yung isang dinideliver sa atin ni Google. Eh. Uh, to help our students collaborate, communicate. And then, syempre, uh, syempre uh, to, to be critical thinkers. Yan. And then, to be creative, syempre. So, so that's uh, HyperDocs. Yan. So, that's Google Form for you. Yan. And then, yan, syempre, may HyperDocs na tayo. Yan. Yehey! Diba? Meron na tayong simpleng HyperDocs. Yan. If you want samples, actually, marami siya sa internet. Uh, kung gusto niyo makita ng mga samples, you can search. Yan. Uh, nakadepende kayo sa atin eh, kung paano natin i-design yung ating HyperDocs. Uh, kung gusto niyo siyang, let's say, yung module mismo. Uh, gusto niyo siyang i-transform na HyperDocs. Uh, wala naman siguro masama doon na uh, you'll just add uh, uh, information lalo doon sa mga unfamiliar words sa module natin. Yan. Yan. So, ganun siya. So, next. Yan. So, since tapos na tayo sa workshop, yan. Siyempre, finally, pag-clinic na yan, yan. Anong makuha ng bata? Yan. yan. Binigyan ko siya ng badge. Yan. Yan. Ito ay ano lang. Uh, maganda kasi itong pang-motivate po sa mga estudyante natin. Napansin nyo yung dulo ng ano, dulo ng hyperdocs na slides. Nakakuha siya ng badge niya. Uh, parang bragging rights to sa bata eh. Actually, this is a good... Uh, uh, intrinsic motivation sa mga estudyante natin. Na, na once they complete something, yan, uh, they can actually earn uh, this badge. Yan. So, ganun siya. So, so, saan naman gawa to? Yan. Saan gawa to? Yan. I'll be teaching you also this one. Yan, kasama kasi to. Uh, Google Drawings natin. Familiar ba kayo doon? Yan. Doon ko lang siya ginawa. Actually, nandun na lahat ng kailangan ko para magawa tong badge na to. Yan. Papakita natin mamaya yung sample niyan. So, uh, we're done dito sa part na to. Yan. Uh, pinakita na rin natin yung sa part ng, ng pwedeng insert ang, ang Google Form. Yan. Pansin nyo. Uh, and then, syempre, gusto rin natin pakita uh, paano nga ba nagawa yan. And then, downloadable siya. Pwede siya download. Yan. Pag ng bata, yan. Magagamit niya. Or ma... Pwede niya i-post kung gusto niya, di ba? So, let's look at Google Drawings. Yan. So, yun na yung next part ko. Yan. Diretso na ako dito. Yan. Uh, dito na lang ako sa drive. Yan. Medyo madami-dami yung laman. And then, uh, when you go to Google Drawings, yan. more options, then... Yan. Ito, Google Drawings. Yan. Pag-clinic natin, yan. ito na siya. Aha, eto na siya, Google Drawings. Yan. Kala ko nagluload pa. Yan na nga pala siya, sorry. Hinihintay ko magload. Hinihintay ko mag ang hinihintay ko, ang inexpect ko lalabas itong itong badge ko. Yan, kaya medyo medyo na delay para na delay magsalita. Yan. Mga pala yan na pala siya. Yan. So sa Google Drawings natin, meron tayo tayong tinatawag natin na canvas natin na pwede nating uh, lagyan ng uh, like for example, ng mga drawings natin, mga tools natin. Yan. And then this is adjustable. Yan. Pag pag uh, Drinag natin yan. yan. Papansin nyo. Yan. Pwede ko siyang i-adjust. Adjustable siya. So, automatic siya na-adjust. So, ganun siya. So, that's one thing about Google Drawings. Or, uh, you can just do the page setup. Yan. And then, kung anong size yung gusto nyo. Yan. So, sabihin natin pixels kasi gagawa ko ng badge, di ba? Sabihin natin pixels. So, I'll go with 500 by 500. And then, apply natin. Yan siya. And then, lagay natin yung, uh, sabihin natin itong circle shape. Or, again, uh, ano ba? Itong uh, donut. Yan. Bilog lang natin. Yan. 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 Then, gitna ko siya. So, ito. Yan. Uh, and then, gusto kong palitan yung kulay. Yan. So, kung palitan yung kulay, so sabihin natin, uh, 
yung fill color. So, pag ko yan, lalabas ito. Yan. Pansin nyo, nadagdagan, nadagdagan siya yung mga, uh, tag dito, mga tools natin. Yan. So, kapalitan ng fill color. So, sabihin natin, ang fill color ko ay uh, this one. Ayan. Ako kung maganda sa mata. Pwede <laughs> uh, palitan natin. Siguro, eto, eto na siguro, yan. yan. And then, dito naman sa, eto, napansin nyo, may line na black. Yan. So, sabihin natin na uh, uh, transparent. Yan. Tanggalin natin yung linyang black. Yan, kung gusto natin. Or, kung gusto nyo, wala naman masama, ilagay nyo yung black. And then, uh, medyo lakihan nyo yung, ano nya. Yan. Medyo lakihan nyo yung points ng, ng border nya. And then, uh, sabihin natin, gawin natin. Napansin nyo ito kanina. Ito ay, yan yung linya niya, no? Yan, dinesign natin na ganyan. Sabihin natin, ito ay, yeah, purely ganyan. Yeah. Sabihin natin ganyan. And then, uh, maglalagay ako ng image. So, mag-insert ako. So, insert, yan, image. Then, search the web. Sabihin natin, uh, Google logo. Sabihin natin, ito. Ito nga, gamitin natin. Then, insert. Then, hintayin nyo lang, nag-create siya ng image yan. Uh, uh, Gine-generate niya para ma-insert yung image. So, sabihin natin yan. So, nandito na lahat ng kailangan ko, no? Sabihin natin, gayahin natin badge kanina. So, ito na yung ating uh, ang hirap igit na. <laughs> yan, dito natin. Pasakali. Yan. Pero pa, uh, tanggapin natin, ganyan talaga siya. Ayan, so sabihin natin yan. And then, lalagay ako ng text. Ayan. Lalagay na ng text. Ayan. Sabihin natin, uh, level 2. Siya. Uh, app smash level 1. Ayan, sabihin natin, app smash level 1. Tapos kung gusto kong palitan ng font, ayan natin ito. Ayan. Up smash. Ayan. Hindi pala siya na center. Center natin. Ayan. Up smash level. Copy ko lang. Then paste. Level 1. Ayan. Sabihin natin this is batch. Up smash. App Smash Level 1 Badge. Yan. Ano pansin nyo? Yan. Ganun lang siya. And then, kung gusto pa natin mag-insert, so, ito yung mga tools lang natin. Ganun lang kasimple, ah. Ito yung mga tabs natin. Yan. Mga edit, view. Yan. Then, sabi natin, gusto pa natin mag-insert ng... Kanina, napansin nyo, nag-insert ako ng text. Naglagay ako ng image. Yan. Ito, shape. Yan. Sabi natin, gusto pa natin maglagay ng shape. Like, for example, uh, meron ba akong ano dito? Hmm... Ano pwede kong gawin na shape? Ito. Ito, star. Yan. Sabihin natin may star tayo. Yan. Copy ko lang. And paste. And ganun din. Yan. So, sabihin natin, i-recolor natin to. Sabihin natin, this is red. Yan. Red siya. Yan. Uh, this one is red also. So, yan. So, ganyan lang siya. So, this is simply our badge. And then, transparent na po yan. Automatic. So, when we save it, yan. Gusto nating i-download. Yan. Pwede natin siya i-download as PNG file. Yan. So, download ko na siya. So, automatic na. Ito na siya. So, pag in-open natin yan. Yan. So, makikita na natin yung ginawa nating badge. So, so ganun lang kasimple. So, this is just uh, a basic of Google Drawing sa inyo na sana uh, magamit nyo. Kasi uh, actually, nandito na lahat nung pag magdo-drawing ka sa kanya, nandito na lahat ng kailangan mo sa kanya. Like for example, ito, example ko lang ito. Uh, itong scribble. So, natutuwa kasi ako dito eh. Yan, yung scribble na yan. And tinutulungan niyang may straight yung ginagawa mo. Yan. Tinutulungan niya. Ayun, yung straight niya, di ba? Yun ang kagandahan dito eh. May ganun siyang uh, feature. Yan. Nakita ko lang itong isa niya. Yan, yung scribble niya, di ba? Umayos ng konti yung ginawa kong linya. So, ganun siya. So, pag ano, select lang natin. Kung gusto natin burahin yan, select lang natin. 
Yeah, ganun siya. So this is uh, simply a Google drawing for you and hopefully uh, nakuha natin kung paano ba ito gamitin. And I think uh, yun na ang aking presentation. At uh, hopefully uh, naintindihan or natuto kahit pa paano sa aking uh, pagpapresent na itong HyperDoc sa inyo. At sana magkaroon kayo ng idea and syempre be creative kung magpapresent kayo sa inyong mga uh, studyante. So yun lamang and uh, stop na ako ng sharing. Wow, this is truly something that we could explore and use in our classes, Sir Earl. Thank you so much, Paul, for your generous sharing of your proficiency. Sir Earl, narinig ko kanina that hyperdocs are like the teacher's lesson plans and modules, but in a digital form. Mas nakakaingan yung gamitin at basahin because these instantly provide access for students to all contents and learning in a very organized digital space. Tama po ba, sir? Yes, ma'am. Tama po. <laughs> Napangiti na lamang si sir sa yung synthesis, ano? So, sir, Kasi, sir, hmm. go ahead. Nakaka, nakaka, stars, na, nagugulat ako. Uh, Ang awesome lang kasing pakinggan na uh, uh, yung HyperDocs will surely help us create the best blended learning experience for both teachers and students. At, alam mo, Ms. Pam and Sir Earl, isa pa sa cool na narinig ko dito is the opportunity to work collaboratively. Diba? Yes. Something na kailangan-kailangan natin ngayon sa new normal way of learning and teaching. Tama po? Yes, and, po. Uulitin ko lang para sa mga viewers, uh, just to emphasize, yung sinabi ni Sir Earl kanina din na uh, para siyang infinite black hole of information, which is for free. Tandaan po natin, F-R-E-E, -E, this is for free. Kaya ano pa ba nga hanapin natin? Mas libre ba sa pagmamahal na hinahanap natin sa iba? So, sino sa ating dalawang mga video talaga? Ano? <laughs> Oo, oh, oh. hindi daw natin kailangan makiamot ng maraming bagay o kaya magbayad para lang makuha gusto natin. Dahil mismo dito sa mga sinabi ng ating speaker ay mayroong free okay. na makukuha natin. Diba? Yan, Kung tama natin naman yan. Kung hindi natin kailangan malaking oras na gugugulin okay. para lamang malaman natin importante tayo at yung ginagawa natin. Sir Earl, nakakapagpahugot lines ka naman sa <laughs> <laughs> Tama ka dyan. Thank you so much again, Sir Earl. Thank you, Paul. Maraming maraming salamat, Sir Earl. And we're hoping to meet you by, uh, maybe soon face-to-face -face, and we could have our face-to-face -face discussion as well. Matuturuan mo kami <laughs> ni Ma'am Jen. Yes, Ma'am. Hopefully po. Hopefully. All right. Thank you so much. And before we proceed um, to our next speaker po, ayan, as you can see, on your screen right now, okay, we are flashing the evaluation link. Okay, so um, all you need to do is to click the link and of course, okay, do everything that needs to be done as regards evaluation um, about our speakers, about our topic, everything about the session for today. It's a good Saturday. Actually, it's a great Saturday and I hope that you have learned a lot na kami nga mula rito ay natututo rin. So, alam namin lahat kayo, sama-sama tayong natututo. So, why don't you click the link? Maybe a little later, not now, ha? Kasi, Jen, we still have two? Yes, right? we still have two more speakers ngayong hapon. Mm -hmm. And so, nila. so, and so ako, excited ako. Kaya naman, while the momentum is still high, we push more to learning. This time, let me introduce to you our next guest speaker this afternoon. Alam nyo ba that he is an EdTech coach, a Google Educator Group Philippines Emeritus, Google Certified Trainer and Innovator. He aims to lead schools and educational institutions towards digital transformation through adoption of Google for Education products and other recommended programs to increase awareness and productivity. He uses his experiences in digital learning programs, knowledge in effective traditional teaching practices, and 
exposure in different educational institutions to empower educators to build engaging connections with their students and achieve maximum learning potential. Earlier this year, he was chosen to be part of YouTube's Creator Day education event. He became a YouTube Edu creator along with other 14 content creators in the Philippines. Wow! Through his channel, Look Beyond the Classroom. He aims to inspire and elevate educators' innovative skills, create sustainable programs, and drive to create their own local content for teaching. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a virtual applause to discuss about interactive worksheets with drawings, YouTube external resources for interactive worksheets. Let's welcome Sir Adrian Duke Cruz. Hello, 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 sir. Adrian. Hello, sir. Good afternoon, po. Grabe na, na overwhelm ako. Yes, yung binasa yes, sa bio mo. note niya. <laughs> Nag-expect tayo. Grabe kasi sobrang galing niya. And nabasa ko actually ate yung, ano, yung uh, YouTube event. Isa siyang mm -hmm. malaking event for the whole uh, Philippines. At biruin mong makasama ang isa sa ating mga speakers ngayong hapon. Right. Malaking yes, bagay yan yes, para sa lahat ng viewers. Yeah. Hindi lang, talagang pinaghandaan itong event na to. Yes. We just get our speakers from like, our list of friends from Facebook or something like that. They're all reliable, credible, effective, and efficient. Yes. We have invited top-notch speakers from all over the Philippines to be part of this event. Kaya maraming salamat po. And some of them have been actually involved internationally. Yes. In wow. Speaking engagement. Kaya napakalaking bagay talaga nito para sa atin. Ibig sabihin, international host na pala tayo dyan. Uh, uh, I don't know. So, ibig sabihin, so, ibig sabihin yung mga hugots natin, hindi lang dito sa Pinas na papanood. Makakot yan sa ibang bansa, diba? Ayan. And you know what, i-commend na rin natin yung iba nating speakers kanina mula nung umaga hanggang ngayong hapon sa napakagandang uh, talks na binigay nila sa atin. Alright, nandito na. Hello po. Ayan. Hi, sir. Ayan. Hello, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Afternoon. Tignan po ako ngayon at nakikita ko ngayon. Nakikita yes. at naririnig po. Medyo mahina lang ng konti. Medyo pero mahina ano lang ng konti. Power up Ayan. I will try to adjust, but uh, good afternoon, everyone. I hope there. you can hear me. Ayan, naririnig yes. na ako. So thank you very much for inviting me for today's session. Hindi bago sa akin ang mga topics ito since I've been actually doing these kind of trainings ng face-to-face -face at ng online um, when it comes to mga applications ni Google. But right now, I think this is really one of um, one of the unique um, topics no, na ginawa under DepEd and also with Google. Yung tinatawag natin na app smashing. Um, okay lang po? Naririnig ako ngayon? Okay lang? Malinaw? What, yes, sir. Okay. Loud okay. and clear. Loud and clear. Thank you very much. So, for today, actually, naatasan ako magturo at magdemo ng uh, interactive worksheets with Google Drawings plus YouTube and external resources. Earlier, nagkaroon na tayo ng onting idea on Google Drawings with uh, our yung yung last speaker natin. But right now, let's deep dive. No, how we can make Google Drawings even more interactive. Because right now. Ikalawang taon na natin na doing online teaching. And right now, I think it's about time to really level up our skills. No? Ano pa bang dapat natin gawin or ano pa dapat natin gawin uh, when it comes to being more creative? Kasi nga, um, as of now, we still are kumaga, be, still being challenged when it comes to how do we become more engaging with our students? How can we make our materials even more effective. Kasi sabi nga natin, with we that, have to have... Mm -hmm. we have with to that have, being said, yun. sir, uh -oh. we're gonna be giving the floor to you para it's sure. all yours. So yes. everybody would be all eyes on you, Paul. Yes, the screen is all yours, sir. Good luck and thank you in advance. Thank you very much. I will be sharing my screen now. There. So my topic would be App Smash 
interactive worksheets with Google Drawings, YouTube, and exter external resources. Now, sabi nga natin dito, tulad ng binanggit ko kanina, how do we make our activities, our modules, materials, even more interactive with our students? Eh? Ito yung challenge sa atin ngayon, now that we're, we've just entered our second year of remote teaching. Kung last year we've talked about the basic Google tools, how to use them, how to maximize them, right now let's talk about Google Drawings. And later on, babagitin ko din si YouTube and some other external resources na may kita natin dito na yung mga materials natin na non-Google related um, documents, files can still be useful, can be, um, how do I say it? Kumbaga, we can still restructure it and even some um, very good resources online, yung mga websites na nakikita natin na magandang ipabasa, ipapanood sa ating mga students, magagamit natin ito. So now, ang gusto natin gawin dito ay mas mapadali natin ang mga modules or materials ng mga students, making it an all-in-one material. Um, right now, I'd like to ask everybody here in the comment section, you can just type in your comments or your questions. I'd like to know, ginagamit po ba ang Google Drawings as of the moment? Were you able to try Google Drawings in the previous weeks or months no, na nagtuturo na tayo? Now, I'll be waiting for your responses sa ating chat section. But um, right now, again, I would like to reiterate here, no, ang ating topic, this would be Google Drawings plus YouTube and external resources. So tatlo ang ating mga, actually, hindi lang tatlo to eh, kasi yung external resources natin, ang dami nito. We can talk about maybe websites, no, reliable, re reliable resources. Um, even Google Forms and other um, tools na pwede natin ma-link all together in our Google Drawings. Thank you very much for responding in our chat section or in comment in our comment section. Right now, magpo-focus talaga ako sa Google Drawings. Ano ba si Google Drawings? Bakit hindi ko siya nakikita sa mga pagpipilian natin ng mga Google Apps? I want to show you and I want to tell you also that Google Drawings is actually a part of the Google for Education uh, suite of applications. So itong Google Drawings na ito, matagal na po ito, isa to sa mga naunang applications na nabuo at inilabas ni Google for everybody. No? For everybody ito. Now, just to read this um, definition, no? Google Drawings is a free web-based diagramming software developed by Google. So, ano ba ang pwede natin gawin with Google Drawings? Now, with Google Drawings, you can collaborate definitely. This is also similar with using Google Docs, Slides, and Sheets that you can share this with your students, your classmates, your colleagues. No, You can work together. You can come up with different... Um, Activity sheets, no? So, focusing tayo sa pag-create ng mga iba-ibang activity sheets for our students. So, in this case, what we want to do is to utilize Google Drawing para magkaroon pa ng mga interactive materials or, kumbaga, may interactive component ang mga students natin when it comes to accessing their digital materials. We all know we've been using Google Docs, we've been using Google Slides, but let's try to, you know, utilize what Google is actually offering na isa din ang masasabi ko ay isa to sa mga effective application ni Google pero underrated. No? Isa to sa mga underrated na application. Now, what you can do here is that you can create flowcharts. You can create um, organizational charts. You can create Website frames, and dami. Mind mapping, Venn diagram, concept maps, and dami. You can also create your own images na pwede niyo man-utilize with your Google Drawing. Now, I will exit first in our in my presentation. And I will open a new tab here. Now, how do we access Google Drawing? 
Now, ang common na portal natin for all the Google applications ay yung tinatawag natin na Google Apps icon that's located in the upper right portion of our screen, this one. They also call this as waffle icon. Ito. Pero if you will scroll down, wala tayong may kitang logo ni Google Drawings. Now, pakita ko ulit, ano ba ang logo or itsura ni Google Drawings? Ito siya. Yung logo niya is kulay pula. Very similar with Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides, but it's color red. Now, going back to this tab, I will go back to the waffle icon. Wala. Wala dito si Google Drawings. I think, kaya din siguro hindi siya masyadong napapansin is that hindi siya visible in the waffle icon. But there are different ways on how we can access um, Google Drawings. Now, one would be, if you go to your Google Drive, I've already opened my Google Drive earlier, no, para sa presentation natin ngayon. Now, here, when you click the new icon or the plus icon in the upper left portion of your screen, you will see here folder, file upload, folder upload, at yung mga applications si Google. Now, when you click more, ayan, may kita na natin dito yung iba pang applications na baka hindi natin masyadong sinisilip, no? Well, I am, I am also guilty on this, no? Kung maga, sometimes hindi natin na na-explore yung ibang mga applications pa na meron si Google. Minsan, hindi lang talaga siya fully visible, but we really just have to explore. And right now, you are, if you're watching right now, you are in a perfect position, situation, no? To know more about Google Drawings. Now, when we click more, we can already access or open Google Drawings. So, ito na po ang itsura ng Google Drawings. Earlier also, um, si Sir Earl, he was able to discuss briefly no, si Google Drawings as one way for you to create different logos, icons. No? Um, guilty ako nito before, no? Pag may mga nagtatanong sa akin before ng mga teachers, way back siguro mga five years ago, four years ago, Sir, ano ba yung Google Drawings? I always tell them, ah, it's also similar to Paint. no? Just to, to give them like a brief idea on what Google Drawing is. But I would have to apologize to everybody who I answered before no, na it is similar to Paint. Kasi this is more than a Paint. This is a very good tool when it comes to being more creative, being uh, coming up with different um, different interactive materials na, na pwede nyong ipa-implement at ipagawa sa mga students. So this is a supplementary tool for you, for the teachers, para magkaroon ng interactive element ang ating mga students. Now, just to show you, Ano pa ang pwedeng or papaano pa pwede ma-access si Google Drawing is that when you open another tab, you can just simply type in the name of the app dot google dot com in your search box or what we call the Omnibox. So ito po, the search box here, it's also called the Omnibox. You can already type here drawings dot with google dot com. Ayan. So when you go here, oops. Make sure you type in drawings. Ayan. Dot with google.com. Tapa. Ah, sorry. Drawings dot google dot com. Sorry. Ayan. So when you type in drawings dot google dot com, you will be redire redirected to this page. Now, unfortunately, if you're looking for a home page for Google Drawing, wala po. Tula di Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides. Automatic if you access Google Drawings, gawaan na to. Now, this is already your page to do whatever you want. Now, here, ano bang pwede natin makita? Um, you, can, you can insert ayan, images. So, kung, kung gusto nyo mag-soft edit ng mga materials nyo, gusto nyo itang tanggalin yung ibang parts ng picture, you can do that. If you want to... Um, come up with your own logo, you can do that as well. Now, 
ito yung ginagamit ng ibang mga teachers if they want to really have their own logos. For example, if you want to create a badge or maybe dati kasi before, dati meron tayong mga ribbons no, na ibinibigay sa ating mga students when we're teaching face-to-face. But right now, since everything is digital, we can also come up with digital ribbons na as a, that can serve as a reward for your students. How do we do that? So this is just a quick no, quick um, demo of creating ribbons for your students. For example, you want to reward them or give them like or acknowledge them as being like um, um, early bird award. For example, early bird award for students who always come comes in early sa ating online classes. So, what you can do here is you can insert shape. For example, um, gawa tayo ng mga mga logos, no? For example, I want to insert circle here. Gawa tayo. And then you want to insert, for example, um, other shapes. Like, you gusto mong or lagyan ng label ito, no? So, you can maybe use this shape and come up with this design. No? Medyo tsagaan lang to. Pero as you can see here, it allows you to be more creative to be able to customize your materials for your students. Now, kung gusto nyo mag-incorporate ng, let's say, coming from the web na mga images, you can insert image and click search the web. So maybe here you can search for trophy. Ang kagandahan dito, tulad ni Google Slides and Google Docs, kung na-explore nyo na before, when you click the insert here and image, search the web, you automatically open or you, aut you automatically have a quick search on your right portion of your screen. So hindi na tayo kailangan pang magpalabas-pasok sa isang tab or in another page. no. So all in one here in this Google Drawing application. So here, since I've typed here trophy, pili lang ako ng ano bang pinakamagandang icon that I can put in my, my ribbon for my students. So for example, this one. So maganda dito, drag and drop lang siya. And then, kadalasan dito, ang makikita natin ng mga images ay also PNG files. Or, kumbaga, wala nang background sa likod. So, yan. What you can do here is that you can put it here, you can customize whatever you want here to make it even more special for your students. So, dito, ma ma change lang yung order, no? And then, maybe, you can type here, um, early bird... Awardee. So you can come up with different styles of how you can engage your students. Pwede kayong magpa-reward system. No? So here, ano pa ba? I will just format this one. So same, similar with Google Docs and Slides, may formatting options tayo dito para mas ma-customize pa natin ang ating logos na pwedeng gawin for your students. You can change the color. Ayan. So, again, it's up to you or up to your styling, no? Kung pa paano nyo siya gustong gawin for your students. Now, if you want to maybe have more design, let's say, hanap tayo like Laurel. Ayan. Mga ganito. So, you can just drag icons here. And then, ayusin lang natin ng ganito. So, may kita ninyo, in just a couple of minutes, we can already come up with these kinds of material that we can already produce for our students. Now, since this is um, a diagramming tool, we can just simply adjust this. There. And you can download this as ODP, PDF, JPEG, PNG, and Scalable Vector Graphics. 
So here, let's say I want to use this already and make this an official um, icon for my students. I can already download this as PNG. So that's one way of, you know, customizing your materials for your students using Google Drawings. So isa pa lang yan sa mga pwede natin gawin with Google Drawings. Now, the other one here, sanay tayo na magbibigay tayo or gagawa tayo ng mga slide presentations for our students. Maybe we use PowerPoint presentations or Google Slides or Google Docs to come up with our modules. But right now, I would also like to show you that Google Drawings can also be a very effective tool when it comes to gathering all the materials needed or, yeah, all the materials needed for, for a specific topic. For example, one week of your teaching for your students, pwedeng lahat yun nasa Google Drawings na. We make sure that every material that you're going to use for your students are already streamlined in one material. So kung kanina na ituro kan na ituro ng ibang mga presenters natin how to maximize Google Slides, how to maximize Google Docs, no, creating hyper docs. Right now, we're using Google Drawings. Now, if you have questions, you can ask it in the chat section. Hopefully masagot natin ang inyong mga katanungan. So, I have prepared or papakita ko ng isa pang demo ulit, no na ipapakita ko paano na ba maging or paano makagawa na interactive worksheets. Now, opening another tab here, again, we just go to drawings.google.com. I'll just go back to my presentation for a bit now. So, ito naman, pakita ko na yung external resources natin pwede natin ma-smash or ma-app smash with Google Drawings. Hindi sayang yung mga nare-research natin ng mga materials. Before kasi what we can do there is that we copy and paste resources from one website. We copy them from one website. We paste it to Google Slides. We paste that to Google Docs. No? But right now, what we can do is that we can redirect them from Google Drawings, mapupunta sila sa mga websites na na-curate ninyo. In that way, we are also teaching our students to become independent learners. Di ba ngayon, dahil online teaching tayo, what we want to make sure is that our students become more independent. Our students become more independent. Sorry for this one. Okay. What we want to do is, um, or ang goal natin dito ay maging independent ang ating mga students no when it comes to um, coming up or reading the materials na pinrepair natin. So dito, yung mga resources natin, gagawin natin or ilalagay natin in Google Drawings. One example would be if you are a science teacher, actually this topic, it's for all subjects. no It's up to us on how we can, how we can utilize the app Hindi ibig sabihin na, ah, computer teacher lang pwede dito or mas maganda lang to for English teachers. Not necessarily. Basta kahit anong topic and you really want or give an effort to make it interactive for your students, any subjects would be applicable for this one. Now, since I'm a science teacher, I have research, no? One example of my resources here would be this one. The heart, no? So what if I want this to be their interactive worksheet and I want them to make sure, no, that they will be able to label each of these um, parts. So here, what, we, what you can do here is that you can copy the image. I can paste it here. Now, Sir, paano kapag ano, may mga ano na siya, may mga, what you call this, may mga labels na. So dito, you can cover them, insert shape, you can cover them, you make sure that it's white, no? 
pwede mong tanggalin yung borders or make it white also. Now, kung meron naman kayong makikita ng mga mga references na walang labels, then that's okay, that's perfect. But I also want to show you that in this strategy, no, um, we can be resourceful. At pwedeng-pwedeng, pwedeng-pwede ito with Google Drawings. Yeah. And doing it live na live, no? Kung bago pa lang tayo dito, definitely mapapractice natin ito. Um, I've been doing this for a couple of years already. So medyo when it comes to yung speed, no? kahit pa paano, medyo mabilis-bilis na tayo. Pero don't worry for the other teachers. If your concern is to be, sir, hindi ko masyadong kabisado, that's okay. no? We don't really have to use everything altogether. Kunyari, uh, we know that We've, we have different topics for today. We have so many apps to learn, no? Pero the thing is, no, we might be overwhelmed, but this kind of session, it's something that you can learn from, but at the same time, pwede nyong maging banko, no? Banko ng mga tools na pwede nyong gamitin next time, no? Kumbaga, for this week for your students, you use Google Slides. Maybe next month, you use other tools, no? In that way, you as a teacher, you have different weapons to show or to to use, no? Hindi, pare, hindi pare-pareho. And at the same time, you make sure that you you are not predictable, too predictable for your students. So, ah, alam ko nagagamitin ni Sir, ni Ma'am, Google ano, Drawings, kasi yan yung parati yung ginagamit. Again, for all the topics you've learned since this morning, you can park it. <laughs> Kumaga, it's good to know, pero nandun, na, na, naiintindihan ko po, nararamdaman ko ang inyong mga concerns at agam-agam na masyado ata akong na-overwhelm sa lahat ng mga tools ito. Pero again, what you can do here is you choose first what you really like, you try to practice, the other tools na natutunan nyo, balikan nyo ulit some other time. But definitely, this session is not meant to overwhelm you or to scare you, teachers, but this is to further equip us and to have different options kapag kailangan natin ilabas tong mga tools na ito. Kasi sabi nga natin, ang mga tools na ito, kailangan ibagay natin sa ating learning objectives. Tama po. So, again, we always have to focus with the learning objectives and then we choose already ano bang tool ang mas babagay para dito. So, yan. Right now, natanggal na natin lahat ng mga labels. Now, what I can do here is to click file and download this as PNG or JPEG already. Sir, bakit? Um, well, if you're going to give this to your students, definitely kapag nakita nila to, pwede nilang, pwede nilang tanggalin. So, what we want to come up with or to have is like a solid image without the labels, no? So, tanggalin na natin to. At dahil dinownload natin earlier ang unlabeled image, so we just go to insert image, upload from your computer, hanapin natin yung dinownload natin. This one. Open. So, ito na siya. Now, what you can do here is that um, Ito yung page natin, teachers. No? Pwede nyo itong i-adjust anytime you want to. But the other technique here is that wag nyo tiperin. You, you have all the space that you can use to, to maximize this for your students. You can even use the outside portion ng ating, ano, ng ating uh, material. Ibig sabihin yung sides, eto, yung blank spaces sa left and right. So, paano po yun? So, dito, um, if we're going to, if we're coming up with um, an interactive material, let's say, we want to insert directions. So, lagay lang natin dito, uh, click lang natin dito, insert, uh, maybe text box, or shape na lang. 
Ang maganda dito, ang dami niyang options na pwedeng pagpilian. So you can maximize the space outside the sheet. Now, you can put here like directions. Ayan. Or dapat ata text box yung ginawa ko. Ulitin ko. Insert text box here. So kung sa Google Slides at Google Docs, meron tayong allotted um, page or meron tayong allotted slides. Dito naman, we can use all the space. So for example, directions. Drag or identify each parts of the heart. No? Now, nasan yung mga parts or nasan na yung mga labels? No? So what we can do here, lagyan natin to ng design. So again, dito, magkakaano din eh. Kung baga, may, may, may halong ano to, um, artistic side ng, ng, ng teachers. Depende sa kanila how or depende sa inyo how you would want this to you know be further utilized sabi nga nila marami tayong mga students na visual learners no so you have to make sure that you choose or you complement um the colors no the things that you put in your material so pwedeng lahat ng instructions nandito sa portion na ito on the right portion you can create already the draggable labels, no? So, we can insert shapes. Ah, text box. Ayan. For example, ano ba yung parts ng heart teachers sa mga science teachers na nanonood? Um, for example, we have here aorta. Ayan. So, para lang din to, no? Yung mga ano, word bank, di ba? Kung... Before, sanay tayo sa word bank na nakaprint, no? pen and paper, we can do it here digitally. Ayan. So, para mas madali ang ating buhay, we could just control C, control V. Oops, sorry. One more. Control C, control V. Lagay natin, left ventricle, So if you want to put colors, you can do so. Depende po sa inyo. Hanggang sa magkaroon na kayo ng bank ng mga labels. Kasi ang ending natin din dito, teachers, is that we can... Um, give our students individual copies of this, no? And they can submit it to you. Thank you very much, teachers, for, for helping me out sa mga nag-comment na mga parts ng heart. Thank you. I really appreciate your um, participation. Ayan. So, dagdag natin yung mga sinabi nila, Ma'am, Levi, yan, may left atrium. Ayan. So, lagay lang natin na konti. And so on. No? Now, ito na yung mga, mga boxes no? or yung mga labels na pinrovide natin for our students. Again, our goal here is that to come up with interactive worksheets for our students na sila mismo, magkakaroon sila ng opportunity to, you know, to, 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 to have ownership to their work. So, kunyari, if this is the assignment for them, this is an interactive worksheet. Students can do this, right? So, ayan po. Kung maga, they have an opportunity to, to really know, no? Depende na yan if they would, uh, syempre may kasamang research dito, may kasamang readings, pero dito, this is an activity that I think and definitely they would enjoy, no? So, this is one example. Now, ano pa ba ang pwede natin ipagawa sa ating students with just viewing or accessing this material. For example, you want your students to really understand the concept of heart and how the blood circulates. So here, I have prepared no, 
a YouTube video kasi tayo mahilig tayo maghanap ng mga resources on the internet, di ba? Sa YouTube. So, for example, here, nakahanap tayo ng isang magandang reference. For example, intro to the circulatory system. We just copy this. So, pwede yung copy link. Pwede rin yung sa taas. No? Copy lang natin to. And then we go back to this. Now, you can insert a text box here saying that For example, um, watch the video to further understand the circulatory system. Now, kanina nabanggit yung hyperdocs. Now, this is also similar with the HyperDocs. Meron tayong special icon or feature here, which is this one. Insert link. So, ang kagandaan dito is that you can link all the important materials in your Google Drawing. So, in this case, you want to highlight circulatory system. You click insert link. I-insert natin yung video na kinuha natin from YouTube, we click apply, and then that's it. So that becomes part of your uh, material for your students. Tanggalin natin yung mga yung mga borders. Yan. Ano pa? So again, yung mga ganito, it's an all-in-one worksheet for your students. Why do we have to provide YouTube videos. Again, these are resources that would be helpful for them to further understand the topic. Dahil nga, we only have limited time no, to, to teach everything for our students. We can give supplementary materials, whether it's something that they can watch videos or maybe they can read. So for example, gusto nyo may pabasa rin sa kanila. You value the their skill to read or to become even um, kumaga, mas maging wide reader. No? So for example, you want to give them, you find this website very useful for them. You can copy this link and then you go back to Google Drawings and then you can insert another instruction somewhere where you can put it here for more um, maybe for more readings, kindly access this link or this website. We highlight kung anong gusto nating word na ilagay yung link na yun. We go again to the special key insert link. We paste the website and then we apply. And then it's up to us already where to put it. Now, sir, bakit kailangan maglagay ng website? Again, this is an option for you. Now, di ba, may mga nagtatanong, sir, how do we make sure that each of the students can be addressed? No? Di ba, iba-iba sila ng learning needs. Iba-iba sila ng skills. No? May iba, mabilis maka-intindi ng concept, advanced, no? Advanced learners. And some others would be, you know, needs more time to still understand some topics. So that's why you open different resources. For example, kung ang student natin ay medyo baka kailangan pa nang mas intindihan, they can go back to the video of the circulatory system, which they can already access from here. They don't have to go to YouTube anymore. It's all here. Now, for the advanced learners, you can give them different websites. Oh, kung, kung okay na kayo dito, you can move on to the next topic. I've attached here some references. So, ito naman yung mga website na pwede nyo gawin. So, this addresses the concern na paano tayo mas makakapag-individualize for our students or how do we address 
um, the different learning needs of our students. So again, you have here the activity, na draggable. You have here um, the links that you can use, and such as YouTube or a website. Ang kagandaan dito, when you click this one, eto na siya. No? May, may quick viewing na sa mga links na ibinigay ninyo or inattach natin. So, wag tayong matakot when it comes to like maximizing everything because again, for Google Drawings, kumbaga, it's up to you, it's your own structure, but, pero dito, it allows you to even, to be even more creative, no? to put your style sa mga materials na gusto ninyo. Now, I'd like to show you um, how do we give this to our students. Pwede, app smash nyo with Google Classroom, lagay nyo doon. Then you make sure that's, um, make sure to, um, anong tawag dito? Make, have their own copy for each of the material that you've attached. Eh, paano sir, kapag wala kaming Google Classroom and I just want to use Google Drawings, then okay lang. Now, this is an, an advanced tip that I could share with you. Um, meron tayong tinatawag na force copying. Sir, ano po yung force copying? So, when you give a link to your students or to somebody, automatic make a copy na yung ikiklik ng student or ni colleague or kung sino man. Make a copy na napabawasan na yung time natin or hindi na tayo kailangan pang magsabi na, oh, may kakapi ka na lang. Ah, sir, paano ba mag-may kakapi? Oh, click mo yung file, tapos ganito. So, sometimes, so, it still takes time, no? Nangangain din yun ng oras. Pero if we want to do that already, automatically, sample lang to, up smash demo. Make sure that the accessibility of this document ay hindi restricted. You have to change it to anyone with the link. In this case, I have to, I will give this to you as a sample. No? So copy link, done. Ayan. So ito yun. So ito yung link na pag pinamigay natin to everybody, wait, make sure lang, ayan, anyone with the link can view. Sige. Now, may technique dito. One would be, di ba parang may code sa search box natin or sa Omnibox? Yung link ng material. Kung may kita ninyo or ma-observe ninyo, sa dulo niyan, mayroong word na edit. Or kahit sa ang Google document or Google slide or Google sheets, meron dyan word somewhere na edit. Gawin nyo lang po, tanggalin nyo yung pinakadulo hanggang sa makita mo yung edit na word. Tanggalin nyo yan. And then, if you want to do force copy, click nyo copy. Now, if I give this to my students, how will I know kung effective talaga to? What I do is that I, uh, what you call this, what I do before giving out to my students or to somebody ini-incognito mode ko muna. Bakit? Para malaman ko kung effective siya. Kasi, di ba pag incognito, hindi kanila, hindi hindi ito kayo na-identify. No? So, when we when we try something here, may kita natin na dapat mag-make a copy siya. So, for example, palitan natin ulit. We make sure anyone with the link done. Anyway, dahil hindi ako naka-sign in, no? I will just try here in another tab. Isa pa po. So while we're doing this, baka meron tayong mga tanong. I am open to answering some of your questions in the comment section. Thank you very much for still watching. 
Ulitin lang natin. Ayan. So kung makita ninyo, if I give this already to everybody, lahat kayo can already click make a copy and that's your own material already. You don't have to give instructions anymore na, oh, make a copy, click nyo lang tong file. Tapos hanapin nyo yung make a copy. No? So if you have or if you want to explore on the exact material that I um, gave, how do I do it? I can just share this with everybody. Siguro the team from the DepEd can help me out. I will be pasting the link in our private chat and then you can give this to all of the audience. But thank you very much for assisting. So again, if you want to have a copy of this one no, and you want to explore, I've um, the team can paste the, the link in the comment section. So, abangan po natin. So, again, this is something that you can use. Thank you very much po. So, yan yung link. Um, best that it would be pasted in the comment section or replied, uh, reply as a comment. Ayan. Ayan, thank you very much. So, nandiyan na po, you can access this material. Now, the other one, let's try to explore on other topics. No? How about vocabulary words? Paano naman kung gusto natin mag, magpa-vocabulary words with our students? Sir, kaya ba vocabulary words using Google Drawings? Yes. Now, what you can do here, I've already prepared something ahead of time. Saan na ba yun? Here. So, for example, what you want to do is to... Um, Yung, yung similar to vocabulary words ng, ng pen and paper, no? So, put all the definitions in the page provided. Ito na siya. And then you can, ito, guys, ano na lang to ha? Kinostomize ko na lang siya. Kung maga, it's your way on how to maximize everything or the page here. So, for example, ito na, kasi pinrepare ko na to, no, ahead of time. Pwede nyo gawin is that insert shape, insert squares, para make sure na lalapat siya dun sa allotted space nyo. And then you can um, assign specific colors for each. Again, it's up to you kung gusto nyo isang kulay lang lahat or maraming kulay. So, make it visually Engaging, visually pleasing to the eyes of your students. Sabi nga nila, imagine din natin kung tayo yung estudyante, paano ba tayo or paano ba natin gustong ma-engage? No? So, if we do or we give something similar to this material, no, again, we give our students the opportunity to explore, to have ownership in the different materials that you give. So, ayan. So, if this is um, if this is the, the worksheet, no, each of the students can receive this. Pwede make a copy or force copy for each. Um, the other one is kung meron kayong gamit na Google Classroom, you can, that, you can just assign it as, as an assignment and then make a copy for each. No? So, again, ito yung mga pwede nyong gawin or ideas to make your worksheets even more engaging or kumaga fun for them. So yan po. Ito ang isa pang pwede nyo gawin for your students. Sir, ano pa po bang pwede natin ipagawa with Google Drawings? Um, madami. Madami pa po. One example here would be, talagang tinapos ko itong ano, ano itong... <laughs> Sample. Now, one example also is that, di ba, mahilig din tayo magpa-Venn diagram sa ating mga students, no? So, what we can prepare for our students is maybe a Venn diagram already. Whoop. 
So talagang teachers, um, this really is um, this tool. This is one of the underrated, underestimated, underutilized tool, no? Na napakadaming potential with this application. We just really have to explore. Um, ayan, for example, we have this. Make, we can just make this one transparent. Ayan. So, kita po ninyo, you can already prepare everything for your students ahead of, the, ahead of time. Or the other one, vice versa, you teach them how to utilize Google Drawings. In that way, they can also come up with their own report through Google Drawings. Diba? So, yeah. Um, to be honest, teachers, madami din tayong mga templates that you can download ahead of time or you can search no online. Um, I'll try to answer some of the questions here in the chat or in the comment section. One is from Ma'am Jocelyn. Is it user-friendly, especially if we're using phone device instead of laptop? Hmm, that's really a good question. This one for... For Google Drawings, we can access them through laptop or the Chrome app. Right now, wala pa siyang standalone application na pwedeng ma-download sa phone, but you can try to use the Chrome browser in your um, mobile devices. So yun, you can... You can use that as an alternative. But definitely, isa to sa mga tools, no? kung may kita ninyo, this is also similar with Jamboard. But si Jamboard kasi more on brainstorming tool. No? Pero dito, sa Google Drawings, it's more of um, creating no? creating images, editing, ano pa ba? Um, crafting interactive worksheets. So napakadaming pwedeng gawin with Google Drawings. Now, meron pa ba akong mga examples na baon for our student, uh, for, for the audience? Pwede rin ito. This is actually one of the template that I've um, chosen under ditch.textbook. So, this is one of the um, one of the references I use. No? So, meron tayong mga international resources no na nagpo-provide sila ng mga templates. So one would be yung ditch that text box. Thank you very much. This one, you can also come up with or pwede kayong makakuha ng inspiration from this one and then later on you can modify no yung creating character map. So you can utilize all the icons available here. Sir, so, sang galing tong mga to. So these icons came from here. Insert you have your different shapes, arrows, call out. So, yeah. So, you can explore these and make it your own, no? If if you have a certain personality, no, you can integrate that in your materials, no? Or if the, if it's something na bagay sa inyong mga lesson or topic, you have so many, um, so many options, no? Choices here in Google Drawings. Ayan. Um, and then the other one here, kahit face-to-face -face class teachers, so when we go back, it definitely, kapag bumalik tayo sa face-to-face sa -face at excited tayo doon, definitely hindi naman tayo babalik doon sa traditional, no? Or yung talagang yung conventional ways. These are the things that even if we go back to face-to-face -face teaching, ay magamit natin to with our students. Ayan. Um, what else? Baka meron pa akong mga baon dito ng mga mga samples. Here. This is another one that I that I'd like to to share with you. This is one of the material that I we prepared. Well, actually kasama ko din sa team ng Look Beyond. So, thank you very much Miss June. Ayan. So, this one um, again, similar to the example earlier, no? So you can, 
come up with these um, materials, no? You can get images online. So, syempre, pipili tayo ng talagang mga high-definition images, no? And then, from there, we can um, customize this, no? And then, make our students drag each label to specific parts, no? So, yan po. So, yan po yung pwede nyong gawin or ipa-activity sa mga students. Again, ang dami po, no? So, these are just um, specific to some subjects such as science and English, but dami po. Sobrang dami. I hope you would have time to explore, to tinker with all these tools and features, no? Napaka um, daming pwedeng magawa with Google Drawings. Now, going back to um, my slide presentation, ayan, so definitely, I've already shared with you my best practices on how to do app smashing, no? So, itong mga to, no, uh, yung mga apps, lalo na ngayon, yung mga apps ay user-friendly at accommodating na to each or to other applications. So, you can um, use more than one app at the same time, no? If that will complement or further enhance the experience of your students. Then, again, kasi we're doing this, no? For our students. It might be overwhelming, yes, again, but we can park it for some time and then balikan natin kapag kailangan na natin ng mga applications na pwede natin or gusto natin ilabas for our students. Kasi again, reiterating, we don't want to become too predictable to our students, no? And then we still have to want, we still want to inject yung element ng fun, no? Sa ating mga students. Lalong-lalo na na lahat ngayon ay digital. So, ayan. Um, kung nabitin kayo sa sa aking segment ngayong hapon, you can visit my my YouTube channel. So, since I am also a YouTube edu creator, you can visit my channel. So, it's Look Beyond the Classroom. You can check them out. I have their tutorial videos. Um, mga, mga simple um, tutorials and, and other um, educational videos that hopefully might inspire and help you. So with that, teachers, thank you very much for listening. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Thank you. Ayan. Ayan. Thank you so much po, sir. Wow, grabe yun. <laughs> Ang galing, ah. In fairness, sir, sa lahat ng na-discuss mo, ang dami namin natutunan. Doon ako medyo uh, napukaw ang attention ko nung sa sinabi mong mga labels, eh. Kung gaano kahalaga yung labels. Tama ba, Miss Pam? Gaano ba kahalaga ang label, Miss Pam? Where are you? <laughs> Isang example pa lang yan no, ng mga activities na pwede nilang gawin. Yes. Isang example pero busog na busog na kami, sir. Sana magkameron pa kami ng mas mahabang oras kasama ka. Tama ba, Miss Pam? Sabi ko nga po eh, kung nabitin sila, they can anytime visit my channel as well para mm -hmm. sa mga karagdagang informasyon. Dahil I am always updating my channel. I upload different videos. So, all around, all all about educational technology tools and some inspirational videos for teachers, specifically for teachers. Ayan. Yes, sir. And congratulations, sir, nga pala sa Look Beyond the Classroom mo. Ayan. And uh, balita namin, isa ka sa mga content creators sa program ng YouTube, the, yung YouTube's Creator Day Education Event. Wow, yes, grabe. Sir. Buong Pilipinas po ba yun, sir? Yes po. Um, namili sila ng 15 um, content creators, specifically teachers, around the Philippines. And then, luckily po, ayun, so napili po tayo na talagang matulungan nila at mapalalim pa yung ginagawa namin.
para mas maging effective yung channel namin for our specific audience. And this is really specific to teachers. Ayan. Mm. All right, Miss Jen, if you have noticed, there were actually a lot of comments, no? Mm-hmm. Na nagsasabi talaga na they find uh, this very helpful and it's gonna mm-hmm. be like very engaging and compelling for all the students. So, sir, napaka... Napaka isang malaking pasasalamat. Ayan, oh. From Geralda Balanti, she's actually saying that they, uh, she's thanking you for sharing your expertise. Ayan. Maraming salamat din po. Alright, so with this, sir, we would like to thank you once again for the time and the effort that you have shared with us. Sana hindi itong huli. Definitely. I'm excited to to collaborate with everybody, especially with I like that word, sir. Collaborate. Collaborate. Yes. I think it's like the magic word, you know, this afternoon, this day, actually. This day. Mm-hmm. So just like um, Jen and I, we're doing collaboration right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of Google. And soon, um, and soon, Miss Pam, sana makakolab din natin si sir. Yes, diba? I like that. So, sir, wishing you again all the best, and we would like to hear from you again. Thank you, Thank very you so much. much, Pa. All right. And you know what, Jen? I'm really shaking with everything that we are getting today from all of our reliable speakers. Who would have thought that there's really a lot of things we could bend and mend for our learners? Diba? We're not Tama. joking. Sabi nga, and, Tama. Miss Pam, mm-hmm. alam mo ba? Yes. A news just came in. Hindi pa dyan natatapos ang lahat. May balita ako. Sige, ikaw nang mag-spill ng balitang ito na pinag-chichikahan lang natin a while ago. Kanina, yes. Alam nyo po, we are not only blessed today for hearing life-changing talks from our speakers, we can also say that this day is really our lucky day. You wanna know why? I wanna know why. Share yeah. with everybody. To all our viewers, after the last talk this afternoon, we will have a raffle draw and give away amazing prizes. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Saya. <laughs> Grabe no. <laughs> nakinig ka na lang, nakinig ka na lang maghapon at the comfort of your home. Natuto ka na, may chance ka pang manalo ng pangmalakasang prizes from Google and EdTech. Yay! Isang pangmalakasang palakpak naman dyan. Manalong panalo ka na sa puso niya. Ay, pero ako ba yun? <laughs> paano ba? Paano ba tayo sumali, Miss Pam? Easy peasy. Just make sure to fill in the evaluation links shown in your screen and you are automatically part of the raffle draw. Yeah, di ba so, kanina meron link? Are registered already. Yes. Once they uh, filled out the form, automatic registered na sila and kasali na sila sa ating raffle draw na mangyayari a little later. Bakit ganyan ang Google? Ano, pinapadali nila lahat ng buhay. Yes, ano pa ba? Sa buhay, no? Tama. Ang dami na nating natutunan. Tapos mag-uuwi pa ng prizes. Iba talaga ang Google. Iba talaga kapag nakapag-uwi ka ng isang bagay na ikapapanalo mo. Ano? Ayan. <laughs> Nevertheless, so again, all you need to do is, if you see the link below, alright, all you need to do is click it, and then you are automatically registered. You have an entry already for the raffle draw. Nag-register ka na ba, Jen? Yes. <laughs> Baka <laughs> nagtatry lang ako. Baka naman dito swerte na ako. Bakit saan ka ba binala? <laughs> anyway. 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 Okay. Para naman mabigyan na natin. Hindi, pinapakalma lang natin. Alam ko medyo nakakapagod din talaga yung maghapong nakatutok ka on your screen, right? Pero yan, pinapangiti lang namin kayo. It's just... um. Us telling you that there's always the better side of life. Kahit pagod ka, okay, there's always a big surprise. There's always, you know, something at the end of the rainbow. Diba? Yeah. So I... right now, um, allow me, Jen. Sabi ko nga, there's one more speaker for us. Ito talagang medyo um, kanina pa ito handang-handa para sa atin. So let's complete our list of topics to be shared today to discuss about online physical education with Flipgrid. Okay, allow me to introduce, okay, um, our speaker 
who began her teaching career in a public school back in 20, uh, 2002 in her province. She moved to Manila in 2004 in the hope of a more professional growth. She became a Kumon instructor and after two years transferred to De La Salle Santiago Zobel School. She then taught music, arts, and physical education in the early years for seven years before moving to fifth grade. Riza has been advocating the use of technology in her physical education classes by using the Seesaw Learning Journal and Flipgrid applications, connecting with authors via Skype with author programs and Skype-a-thon events. She is a Google Certified Educator Level 1 and 2, Flipgrid Ambassador, Seesaw Certified Educator and Ambassador, and a Microsoft Certified Educator. She has been the technology mentor for her colleagues in her school and volunteers to train and organize professional development sessions for teachers in the Philippines through the Sharp Sniflats organization and one Fisied.ph group. I hope I've read that right, but anyway, it can be corrected a little later. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, once again to discuss online physical education with Flipgrid, we give you Miss Risa Piso. Hi, good afternoon. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. yes. Here. And <laughs> good afternoon. Smile as well. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you for um, the introduction. It's, uh, you've mentioned my name correctly, Risa Picto, and uh, One Fisted P8, it's a group started by uh, us teachers in De La Salsa Bell, the Fisted. We call the physical education teachers Fisted. And so good. I'd like to say good afternoon to everyone, all the teachers who's here this afternoon, spending your 3 p.m., 4 p.m. weekend with us. Yeah. <laughs> Week it's, ending it's not with... a Shesta time, Mom. It's not a Shesta yes. time because we're alive today. Yes. All right. That's so why we're going to end end, end it with uh, PE. Yes. Yeah, so it's <laughs> Being be active. the best and we're turning it over to you. All right. So let me share my screen to everyone. Uh-huh. Mm. Okay. Here we go. I hope you're seeing it clearly. Let me know if you're seeing it clearly. Yes. Okay. Could you please type yes in the comment section if you're seeing my screen? Good afternoon, everyone. All right. Thank you. Now let's begin. So I'm Ms. Risa. I'm a physical education teacher. And I'd like to share my experience on the use of Google Classroom and Flipgrid in my PE classes. I hope that through this sharing, you'll be able to uh, get something out of it to be used in your own classes, classroom, in your own context. So whatever it is that would be useful to you, Go ahead and take it away, use it, adopt it. So let's begin. So why do we need to up smash Google Classroom and Flipgrid? So let me just share. Some goals that we have for this afternoon are the following. So I hope that through these goals, I will be able to help you manage online distance learning, even though it's challenging, it's tiring. At the end of the day, our students still matters. So Google Classroom, app smashing with Flipgrid. So for me, Google Classroom is our home. So we always want to be home. So how do we make sure that our students are at home? They have something to go to if they need something. So we have Google Classroom for that. Everything is there, whatever they need to learn for their learning uh, experiences, how to share what they learn, how to share their inquiries, what they are wondering about. And the flip Flipgrid is both for you and your students because you as a teacher, you want to prepare what's best for them. So uh, let me go through the next slide now. So we, I will use the CARE word or the CARE acronym. So 
Despite all the challenges, we want to show care to our students. So C stands for curating appropriate resources. And herein comes Flipgrid. So let me just check first if everyone is familiar with Flipgrid. Maybe you've attended one FISED or any other uh, webinars before. Yes. Are you familiar with Flipgrid? Yes? No? Not yet? It's your first time to hear about it? Yes. So uh, my next question now, have you tried using it with your class already? Or classes? Yes. Oh, that's great. Uh, there's one that says no. So of course, uh, when using Flipgrid and Google Classroom, there's the issue of accessibility. So you just have to make do with what you have. So adapt it to your context, whatever it is. So don't force it if it's not really useful, but learn something from it so that in the future you have something that you can use. Okay, so thank you for all your active participation in the comments. So sometimes, so let me go back to curating appropriate resources. Then the A, of course, when you curate, you have to assess what your students are sharing or demonstrating to you, whatever, whether it's a skill or a reflection of a concept that you've been teaching. And then we reflect, both the teacher and the students reflect on the learning process or the learning experiences that we've had. So, and lastly, we have to engage our students in all the stages of learning, whether it's create, it's planning, creating, demonstrating, they're part of it. So they are the center of our universe when it comes to learning. So curate ap appropriate resources means you can create according to skills, fitness, game challenges, or whatever it is that you may need in your subject. So I will be talking mostly about PE, although I'll be sharing also some experiences with art and collaboration with language class. Otherwise, uh, whatever I'm sharing, you can always, always adapt it to your own subject matter. So it's only a strategy or a style but you can always use it in another way that best fit your situation. So how? So like most every teacher, we were thrown into virtual learning or virtual lessons or classes last year. So I've turned into Flipgrid to curate all of my resources. So teaching fifth grade focuses on physical fitness components. And I wanted to show my students the different physical fitness components. So there's two, there's health related and skill. So I've collected sample exercises, performed them in Flipgrid, and this is what I curated. So these, the materials that you will be seeing in the succeeding slides are all curated exercises by me. So of course you have the option to use YouTube and get a link and post it in your Google Classroom. But sometimes YouTube makes things, uh, not makes things, uh, it sometimes causes destruction because once you click a video, there are other videos that they need to view. But with Flipgrid, your kids are just exposed to the learning materials that you want them to focus at that particular time, at that particular term or quarter. So that's what's great about this uh, Flipgrid in PE class. So now after curating all the materials, so all the performance tasks, it's there as you can see in the screen right now. So these are now the curations that I made last year and this school year and each post that i created there's a sample video instructing my students how to perform how to demonstrate how to do the task assigned of them for a particular term or particular quarter on your in your case so aside from all the activities that we do in pe so in 
in Flipgrid, if you're familiar with TikTok, so it's similar, but TikTok is a social media uh, platform, while Flipgrid is a learning platform. So they're kind of similar. The difference is the students are focused on the learning that you want them to experience. And then you can customize the experiences, the resources, the video demonstration, so that it targets really the competencies that you've uh, identified from the DepEd curriculum guide. So I hope I make, I'm making sense to everybody. If I do speak fast, please uh, let me know in the chat and then let's move on. So we have enough time for Q&A if you have some questions and then I'll show you my actual Flipgrid account. And then we had a full year of PE class last year. So we had games, we had folk dances. So here's another resources for the folk dance. So I've divided the resources into the full dance video and the steps. So this, this is what's great about Flipgrid because you can customize the video demonstration according to a specific skill or task that you want your students to uh, demonstrate. So whatever is it, you can, you, you being the teacher in class can direct the learning in as much as your students can also uh, understand in a way that, oh, this is what my teacher wants me to demonstrate. These are the skills. These are the concepts. So it's specific in such a way that whatever you want them to focus on to improve, they can go straight to that particular video. Um, I remember one time in our uh, workshop in tech, EdTech, your video should not go beyond five minutes. Otherwise, your the attention of your students are not there anymore in what you're trying to teach them. So uh, make it short, simple, but uh, meaningful, meaningful or uh, workable for your students. And also let's make sure that their use of technology is purposeful. So with Flipgrid and Google Classroom, they, they only have two applications or platforms to go to. So they're not scattered. They don't need to go anywhere. You can link everything to your Google Classroom. I'll show you an example in a while. And then all the things that you will see here are all curated materials, demonstrations. And then, of course, after you've provided and curated all the resources, you need to assess your students' demonstration of skills and skills and concept. Otherwise, they would just say, pinasubmit ako ni ma'am, di naman chinek. Wala naman akong, hindi naman niya sinabi what to improve on. What do I need to do? So if we ask something from our students, we need to give back to them. Whether it's a comment, a feedback, audio, or whatever is it. So you can do both in Flipgrid or you can do it in your Google Classroom. So your students are only focused on two learning platforms. They don't need to go anywhere. That makes learning more uh, focused and uh, attentive to what you are really trying to uh, work on. We know that they are on their gadgets for the whole day or for a particular part of time. And sometimes they would also feel that it's too much. So let's make it meaningful, assess according to what you've uh, assigned to them. Then, so when you assess, so here's an example of my Google Classroom. So what's great about up smashing Flipgrid with Google Classroom is that there are so many ways to link your learning resource to your Google Classroom. So here's one where uh, I've already linked the whole Flipgrid resources of Tinikling in their Google Classroom. There's already a rubric where they can 
refer to on what will how will they be assessed how will they be rated and then there's also a music so everything is provided so that they wouldn't you know have reasons but it's not there but i don't know what to do so hindi naman sinabi ni ma'am what to do so these are the things that we have to be mindful when we're planning so make sure everything is accessible everything is posted in your Google Classroom. Otherwise, they will keep bugging you in your emails or chats or whatever, what to do, what, where to find, things like that. So, sabi nga ni Ma'am kanina, pinapadali ni Google ang buhay natin. That's really true. I mean, I can hands down to Google. Um, virtual or ODL learning last year, even though it's the first time and we were thrown in, it was, I wouldn't say such a breeze, but it was really, uh, I was able to cope because there's good, there was Google Classroom in as our learning management system. So all the students know where to go, what, where to check, what to do, things like that. So aside from posting it in your Google Classroom, then you you can now it's there it's a one stop shop for you as a teacher and one stop shop for your student as well so your student uploads the video they've recorded whether it's in the regular regular video recording or in your flip grid they can always submit their work in google classroom and then you can use your rubric to grade their performance or their demonstration. Remember the assessment. So here now is your way of assessing without go going to any other apps like going to Messenger, to Facebook, or to whatever learning management system you and your school identified to use. So with Google, everything is there for the teacher. Everything is there for the student. So it makes everything seamless. It makes learning seamless for both of you and your students. And let's thank Google for that and all the innovations that they are doing. We're very grateful. So aside from assessing with the rubric, so all your students will now have a, when you click your Google Classroom, it will look like this. So everyone, let me just check. Who's using Google Classroom now as their LMS? I know uh, my niece from Visayas is already using uh, Google Classroom. Anyone who's still with us who's using Google Classroom, what was your experience? Was it as seamless as I am talking right now? Am I making sense? Yes, Miss Venji and Miss Michelle, Miss Virginia, Sir Brian. Okay, Miss Lorisel, thank you. So how was, maybe later at the end of the session, we can share uh, experiences on your use of the Google Classroom and Flipgrid as well. So here now, remember the uh, curated material. So what's good with Flipgrid is that at a glance, you'll see how many students were able to turn in demonstrate or uh, submit the required uh, material to, to, to show their learning or understanding of a particular topic that you are uh, requiring, the, requiring them to submit. So here you'll see I have 22 students from 5A, 26 from, so at a glance, as a teacher, you're doing a lot of things. You're preparing plans, things like that. And with Flipgrid, you can just quickly check, oh, I have already this much students submitting for, the, for their PT. So it, it gives you a sense of hope or sense of accomplishment that somehow your students are trying to accomplish what you're trying to teach them. So there's really that relationship of 
uh, we will learn together. This is what I'm providing for you. This is what we're, we will interact with. We will learn together. And then let me see how you've learned it. So there you have it for all the performance tasks in the assessment. So here's an example of my student demonstrating a performance task about their spell their name exercise. So we remember we were talking about the physical fitness component. So I'm asking them to demonstrate the exercises here. And here's another one. Same thing, it's exercise, but a different type of activity. So there's so many ways. Uh, by the way, all, the, all these activities, I've only provided the choices, but my students are the ones choosing what they wanted to include in their plan. So in as much as possible, give your students a voice and choice on how they would want to show their learning and understanding of the skill or concept. Only if it's possible. So no one is forcing anybody to do what's not uh, doable at this point in time. And then uh, performance test, same thing. So here's, here's the activity, here's the work of my students. So at a glance, you as a teacher, so just a background in this activity. So there's four types of exercises in health related. So that's why it's, labor, it's labeled, sorry, cardiovascular, muscular endurance, muscular strength, and flexibility. So you as a teacher at a glance, you'd see, okay, my student was able to choose an exercise that really belongs to this particular category or type of an exercise. Okay, so... There you have it for the assessment. Don't worry, we will go to the Google Classroom in a while. So here's what I'm trying to uh, mention a while ago, a collaboration with language and PE class. So the, con the context of their oral presentation is they have to reflect and share their experience on how were they able to create how was their experience in creating their spell your name exercise? So using that experience, that's the context, and they would transfer this learning into their language class, applying the, the concepts they, they are learning in their language class. So there's so many ways to go around and use Flipgrid, and this is just one of them. So am I still making sense with everybody? Okay, now moving on to letter R. So we will reflect on our teaching practices aside from the students reflecting on their own work. So here's a reflection and evaluation of my students in grade four this school year, current school year on how they found P class as how they found me as their PE teacher and the PE class experiences, what they like, what they didn't like, uh, what, what was the most striking experience for them, uh, things like that. So because we need to be able to really inject reflection in our teaching practice, even though it's really challenging. I'm... I, I know it's challenging. Even for me, I have access to technology. My students have access to technology, but it's still challenging because there are so many factors that we cannot control. But we're thankful that with Google Classroom and Flipgrid, it makes things learning for our students and for ourselves teaching uh, much better than way, way before. Okay, although nothing compares to F to F, but we make do with what we have right now. We're resilient, so we might as well bring that into our teaching. So with the reflection, aside from reflecting here, the students also reflect on their lesson. So I have not included a screenshot here, but I will show you uh, the Flipgrid file or 
topic that I've created for that as well. Now, we go to the letter E, engage students in all the stages of learning. Why? Students who are invested in their own learning, you will not have a hard time asking them, submit this work now, where is this? How come you're not yet doing this? How come this is not uh, submitted? It's already end of the quarter. So with Flipgrid, you don't have that, uh, you don't have that, not with Flipgrid, I mean, engaging your students with Google Classroom and Flipgrid makes things uh, manageable, both for you and your students. So engage means not just with the lesson. So you, you connect with them, you form relationships, even though it's very difficult at this point in time, uh, give them a chance to show what they like, how they want to be active in class. Do they want it through a particular exercise or a particular physical activity? Let them be as long as they can demonstrate and show the skills and concepts that you're teaching. So it doesn't have to be what's in the learning competencies uh, from dot to dot, but we adopt in such a way that you and your students do not get burned out from learning all of these things. And then uh, I'm almost done to the last part of the slides. So, but I will show you the Google Classroom, how it's easily, how it makes easier in um, linking your resources to Google Classroom. But I want to share with everyone that using Flipgrid isn't about recording videos, it's about learning. Okay, learning that is social, personal, can happen anywhere, anytime. It's about making connections. It's deep exploration and promotes that everyone is a teacher and everyone is a learner. Uh, be very specific about it, that you're not just asking them to record a video because it's your requirement. So ask them to share something to you because you're interested or because it shows that it shows you that they respect your work as well. So because planning, teaching, assessing, reflecting are not just uh, five, nine to five desk work type of work. So it's really out of passion, out of heart. I know uh, a lot are still grappling with what to use, what to do, but with your dedication, with the things that you're trying to make do, uh, things will be more easy. And thank you that you're leaning now into Google Classroom. So it's going to be more manageable for you and your students. Let me leave you with this uh, quote. Technology will never replace great teachers, but technology in the hands of great teachers like you who are spending your weekend here instead of being with your family, your loved ones, your kids, in the hands of great teachers can be transformational. It, it's, it's, for some, it's a cliche, but it still do. It still is true to its word. That's I, And I quote from... Uh, George Kaurus. So for now, I will be opening. I, I will now show you first the flip grid. So for some, you are, let me check if I'm sharing. I need to share a different slide. So let me go back here. And I'll stop screen sharing, then I'll share my window. So here, so I can change windows. 
Okay, let me check. Is it showing? No. My screen is not showing. Okay, let me just share. Here we go. Let me just share the Chrome tab then. Okay, so here it is. Are you seeing my screen now? Yes. So, so here's my flip grid for the past school year. I've been using it since 2018. So you'll see here, here's, excuse me. So how does a vid, my video look like? Excuse me. So this is the latest one that I did for our P Olympics. So you know the virtual, you know the intramurals in the face-to-face, -face, we've adopted it to virtual by doing P Olympics. So if you are thinking of doing a virtual intramurals games or sports day, uh, Flipgrid is another way to facilitate that, that kind of activity. So this is one activity where I'm showing how to perform, how to perform a particular activity. Notice that I've added the instruction already in the video. So it's once my student clicks the link, they can see it there. They don't need to go anywhere. And they would automatically know, oh, okay, that's how Ms. Risa did it. I'm going to perform it as it is as well. So you'll get to see right away, you'll get to demonstrate the skill I'm in, and then you get to, they get to uh, practice as well. So it's a win-win solution for you and your students. And uh, for the others who are, um, asking how to share your Flipgrid to your Google Classroom. So easy. So this button here will show different ways of sharing. So super, see, I told you a while ago, right? Flipgrid makes, Flipgrid and Google Classroom App Smash makes learning seamless because it's here already. All you have to do is just click share to Google Classroom. And when you click that, you'll be able to post it in your Google Classroom. Or if you want to make it more challenging to your students, you can use the QR code or embed the code. Or if you're on Microsoft Teams, go ahead. So those are the ways to share what, you've, what materials you've curated to your Google Classroom. Now I'm going to, any more, do you have questions about uh, Flipgrid? Uh, there, so uh, Sir Mario is asking how to integrate Google Flipgrid to Classroom. So now I'm sh uh, I've shared it already. All you have to do is just click the link here. Whatever is the resource that you're preparing, just click share and copy this one. Then when you go to your Google Classroom, there's a post there that would say, uh, attach a link. Remember there's that uh, link button in the Google Classroom. Any others? I mean, any other question? None. So you have questions about Google Classroom. So now I'm going to stop sharing and share my Google Classroom, so you have an idea how it looks when it's already integrated. So here's my Google Classroom. So my Google Classroom, uh, the school decided that we're going to be uh, using topics per week as our code. So when, you ha when you're using Google Classroom, and it's org the topics are organized. Your students will surely love to check your Google Classroom. Although it's not as fancy as the other LMS where you'll see photos, things like that. But for me, being able to navigate this way, as simple as that. So when you direct students, okay, go to your P Olympics post. So they would see everything here. 
they don't need to go anywhere, anything. So once it's there, your student will just have to click. So I will click the one in term two with the folk dance. So it's here. So notice, this is an activity, by the way. So Google Classroom is not limited to just posting uh, Flipgrid links. So you can create a discussion and then ask your students to view a video and then ask them to uh, type their observations, things that they've um, noticed from this particular activity. So this one noticed it's only one student because uh, this student missed. So with Google Classroom, you can also uh, individualize the learning or personalize the learning. So you see, Google Classroom has limitless possibilities when it comes to learning. So you just have to be patient when you're learning. Google class learning how to use Google Classroom at with on, within a first year, but after that, you have to you can you know ask people or explore on your own. So you'll be able to really fully utilize the how great is Google Classroom when it comes to uh, facilitating learning. So we post everything from our learning guide to our task to everything. So here's the tinikling. Remember the flip grid a while ago? So I posted it here because it's a material, not an assignment. And then I wanted to show you the the Nickling post itself. I just have to look for it. Okay. We have so many activities that I'm having a hard time there. So maybe it's in the week six there. So you can also link videos from Google Drive if you have materials coming from, not coming from Flipgrid. So, yes, so Ms. Nair is um, agreeing to what we are talking about, submitting. Oh, okay, that's great. So any other questions, clarifications that you uh, want to ask me before this session ends? I hope it's clear how Google Classroom was up smashed, up smashed with Flipgrid can make your learning uh, seamless and easy and manageable uh, all throughout as you complete another school year. So I know you've just started and I am already on term, term two in my school. Okay, if there are no further questions, uh, let me give back. Okay, so one last, what else do you want to uh, ask? Okay, so is the application also available in the end of the learner's account even without downloading the app? Because of Google, you have Google email, right? So Google provides the learners, I'm not sure what's your term, uh, about the learner emails. Okay, adding students to, to Flipgrid without Gmail account. So uh, very easy. So when you create a group, or a topic. So let me show you. I have to show you the flip grid. So let, give me two minutes, I'll share this. Okay, and share screen. Here we go. So here, so in the settings, you can add here, 
allow attachment and in the details. So there's a, I think it's, sorry, sorry. It's not in the topic, it's in the group. Okay, so group there. So here. So if you don't have, you don't have, if you're using Google Classroom, you don't have to, you don't have a problem with, with students without Gmails because it's here, Google Classroom. Otherwise, if you want to add their username, so you have the class list, right? So just copy the names in the class list or in the Excel or in Sheets and use this username. So let me, there. So see, you have an op option here, sorry. <laughs> so Flipgrid is also very good in innovating things. So instead of you typing each of your class name, just upload a CSV and voila, it's there. Or if you have a an email, so you just write at deped.gov.ph. Or so there. So that's for the email or the domain. But for the username, so you have to type the first name, the last name, and the username. So if you want to name them student number one, student number two, go ahead and do it. But if you have Google Classroom, Google Classroom makes life easy for you. It's there already. Okay, what else? How about po kapag nakapag-join ng mga learner, learners using their school accounts? No, no. Once they recorded already in their Flipgrid, it's there. It's saved there. And when you're using Flipgrid, your students will have access to this one. Okay, so, <laughs> so you as a teacher, you have the info.flipgrid.com. That's your access being the teacher and your students, they have this access as well. Uh, okay, let me share my full screen so I could just, um, it won't let me share my full screen. Sorry, I'm so sorry. So I'll just share this with you. Okay, so when your student was able to access the Flipgrid or the code that you've posted in your Google Classroom, they have access to this. So this my.flipgrid.com, that me or that me, it's a... Uh, all the videos that your students were able to create using Flipgrid, whether it's from your class, another teacher, another type of grid or group or topic, it's here. It doesn't, you don't lose it just because uh, they joined in the Google Classroom. Okay, question. How about the students who cannot access the Google Classroom? Um, so if you don't have the Google Classroom, but you're printing your modules and your students have access to internet and you want to use Flipgrid, then put the QR code or the link or the join code. Remember the join code that you see here? So whether you type it as your class name, for example, um, honesty for... A, for example, and that's the the uh, your section name. So, and that's what you created for the code. So, your class will use that code, and they will be able to access that one. Okay. What else? Without Google Classroom, then you can. Without the Google Classroom, but you have the modules and you still want to use Flipgrid, then you can use that. Yes, you can edit the videos like what I'm showing you a while ago. So 
Wait, let me show you what I've created. I think this one. So let me check if it's loading. So here, uh, that's, that's why you were asking because I was not able to show you an example. So here I'm showing the basic dance step of the Tinikling, which was adopted Hi, in five. It's in another YouTube video. So I'm showing the dip step. So I'm putting all the cues for the dance steps here. And here's all the specific right, I think. Uh, specific instruction. So to do the dip with the movement or the feet movement, you just go dipping movement, dip, dip up. So it's similar to what I'm showing here. Let me play uh, until 10 seconds. We're ready for our figure number one, which is the dip. This dip is similar to the movement dipping. So what we're going to dip here is not our hands, but our feet inside those two bamboo poles. In this case, you can either have the poles, whatever you're using to pull, or the tapes. So, okay. I'm sorry if it's going to be. Okay, so I hope that addressed your question. Okay, how about kapag nakapa... Uh, so, uh, so, I've answered Miss Jell. I've also answered Mr. Glenn. Uh, Miss Levy, okay. So, do you still have questions? Clarifications? <laughs> what else could I help you with? Um, for clarification, no, the learners need not create an account in Flipgrid because they will use your Google Classroom account. Remember the, the email account that Google gives to your learners? Uh, the one the one with the, I know you have that, you have a code for that, like the learner, uh, please help me out. <laughs> My my cousin mentioned it to me, and also Miss Mary Mansano. She men mentioned that to me. The learner Google Learner accounts there. So if your students they have the Google Learner account, they use that to sign in in their Flipgrid. Yes, the LRN from um, Miss Mars, I think Peralta. Oh, uh, the class code. Well, what do you mean with the class code? Is that the class code in Google Classroom? Once, once you give the code, they will have to sign in using, remember the group that we created a while ago and that you, you, uh, you can assign a domain, an email domain, or a username, or Google Classroom. So that's it. Yes, thank you, Miss Jella. Learner's account, that's right. Yes, Flipgrid is free. It can be used using your cell phone, your iPad, if you have an iPad, your laptop. So it's compatible, Android, iOS, Chrome, Okay. Thank you. Thank you for all your help. Okay, there. Okay. Yes, Miss Pam. Did you help you out, Miss Pam? Miss Pam. Interactive you discussion. Grave. That proves how interesting her topic is, tama? Yes. Um. Mostly, because it's like depth related questions. Din talaga as regards LRE. Yes. A lot of things, no. 
So, uh, miss, there's a question, Miss Pam, from Miss Presi. Matagal po ba, na po ba ang Flipgrid? Yes. Uh, started using it 2017, 2018. So, yes, you can actually use it in your teaching. If no one is stopping you because it's... Uh, it's learner-centered. When you're using it, you're giving your students voice and choice as to how they would show understanding of your lesson. So remember, I know at the end of the school year, you're preparing your portfolios. And Flipgrid is a great way to share uh, the documents that you and your students were able to accomplish or uh, cre have created during the whole school year. So when you're asked by your principal or the depth ed to submit you don't have to look anywhere screen capture from the facebook or wherever because you have the google classroom and the flipgrid to refer to it's there it's a one-stop shop for you and your students when they need something to submit like they need they need it for scholarship things like that you have it there in your google classroom and in your flipgrid and if you want to know more the specifics of Flipgrid, I cannot share it with you right now, but you can always uh, uh, contact me via Miss Mary to if you still need help. But if you can explore it on your own, go. I really like the term that Miss Risa used a while ago, no one-stop shop, no? Na pa, lalo na ngayon, it's like very chaotic and all, parang hindi mo alam kung saan, saan. Kung ng resources or how are you going yeah. to do all these things that you've been asking your students to do. And here is Miss Risa telling us, mm -hmm. piece of cake. There's an yeah. answer for everything, di ba? So, yes, yes you know, Ms. Jen, ano, ang pinakamaganda pa sa sinabi ni Mama, no? though she wouldn't be able, as much as you would love to share everything to us, syempre, time constraints and all, mm -hmm. pero sinabi niya, we could always reach her out. Diba? Very Saan po ba natin yes. pwedeng i-reach out si Ms. Riza para alam ng mga audience natin? I'll yeah. type my email ad. Okay. And also, if those of you are planning to create your Flipgrid account, you can use mm -hmm. this link. I'll share it in the private comment, and then they will be sharing it with you. And then, um, what else? Oh, All my right. email. So, and then you'll, you can find me at Twitter as well. It's just the same as my first name and my last name. So there you have it. Grabe talaga dito sa Google. Ano, spoon feeding na tayo. Ano pang kailangan yeah. natin gawin? Ano pa bang hahanapin natin? Nandito na ang lahat. Yes. Ay, ako hindi na exactly. ako nakakain. Mukhang ikaw yata, Miss Jen. <laughs> <laughs> Ito na naman tayo. <laughs> Ayan, I think. Miss <laughs> Jen, hindi na ako naghahanap kasi nahanap ko na sila. Oh! Ah! Oh, Google at si Flipgrid. <laughs> Sa bagay. Mukhang na kay Google and Flipgrid ang um, forever. Tama ba ako? Hindi, Dito na ba tayo sasaya? Lifetime, pero walang ah, okay. <laughs> Miss Risa, with your smile, I know na nahanap mo na ang lifetime help mo sa pagtuturo. And thank you for sharing that with us. Yes, sabi nga. Sabi nga kanina, ni Ms. Riza, technology becomes transformational in the hands of great teachers. And we couldn't agree more. Great yes. teachers will always play vital role in educating and inspiring students. And that includes upgrading our strategies and tools and using technology in teaching. Once again, maraming maraming salamat po, Ms. Riza. For that Thank very you. engaging and compelling technique on how to teach online physical education using classroom and flip grid. Maraming salamat po. Yan. Kanina, uh, Miss Pam, Miss Riza kept on asking kung uh, is she still making sense? 
Diba? Kanina tinatanong niya, am I still making sense? And every time she asked, I answered yes. Everything that was discussed today makes so much sense. So again, sa lahat po ng naging speakers natin ngayong hapon, maraming salamat po. And to you, Miss Riza, thank you for wrapping up the whole talk with such commendable job. For sure, a lot of us here couldn't wait to try these techniques in our own classes. Tama? Yes. So, Miss Pam, could we say that it's really a Saturday well spent? Ah, that would be an easy question for me to answer, of course, Jen. And I'm sure glad that we were actually invited. Diba? Usually, we would be like, uh -huh, it's a Saturday. Why work? Why attend? But then again, I'm very, very happy to be part of this one. Mm -hmm. In Kanina, you have already announced it. Diba? Yeah. So, ngayon, itutuloy-tuloy na natin to. We actually told um, them a while ago that we have a surprise for all of our participants. Mm -hmm. And we are going to be having a raffle draw. Raffle. But before that, we're going to be inviting somebody um, special and important. Ooh. So I believe he's already here backstage, but can we put him through? May we have Sir Mark Anthony C.C.? Yay! Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Hello, Miss Pam. Hello, Miss Jen. Good afternoon. And to all of our teachers who are currently watching, good afternoon po sa inyo pong lahat. Ayan. Sir Mark, alam namin sa kasiyahan, sa pagkatuto, sa lahat ng bagay kasama ka namin. Kaya ngayon, gusto sana namin nakabilang ka sa mamimigay ng ating pasurpresa sa lahat ng participants. Ayan. Game ka ba doon, sir? Game ako dyan, syempre. Basta para sa ating mga kaguruan at sa paggamit ng makabagong teknolohiya, supportado po natin yan. Okay. All right. So, right now, siguro ipaalam muna natin kung ano ba yung in-store for them. No, Ano ba yung ating ipaparaffle? Ano yung kanilang makukuha for today? Yan. Balita ko, napaka-special nito and limited edition lang, Miss Pam. Ah, nung nakita ko nga kanina, ay napangang <laughs> And I was Parang... like, I want that. That's why... Yeah, gusto kong sumali. Oo. Yeah. Ay, Sana. Sumali, <laughs> sumali din po kami. Huwag kayo mag-alala, sir. <laughs> we tried. Keeping our fingers crossed because we would want to have this Google Nest Mini 2. Again, yes. we're going to be giving away five Google Nest Mini 2. Ayan, Ayan. try to Google it right now. Kung ano ba ito? But I believe may idea it's... na kayo kung anong itsura mm -hmm. nito and what is this for. Alright? We're going to and... be enjoying this. Okay. Naku, magagamit natin itong mga teachers. Kaya naman napakaswerte ng lima ba? Limang mananalo at mag-uuwi. Ano, na Ay, dalawa na lang. Kasi isa, dalawa, tatlo tayo. Ah, so dalawa. <laughs> <laughs> Sa atin na pala yun. <laughs> okay. So, uh, paano nga ba natin ito gagawin? Miss Jen, we're gonna be... Um, we will have our Wheel of Names. Dito, lahat po ng nag-answer ng ating evaluation form ay automatically kasali na ang name sa ating Wheel of Names na ipapakita na ngayon. Hello, so, Sir Earl. Ayan. 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 Oh, sige. Okay, exciting. Spin the wheel. Ayan. Tignan natin. Let's see. Ang dami. Ilan ang participants natin for this? Uh huh. Going 300, 500? Yeah. I think almost 500 names po. I think that signals our first winner. Okay, Sir Whoa. Mark, may please do the honor. Our first winner is Miss Cherilyn Fernandez. Congratulations. Mom Yay! Cherilyn Fernandez. Okay, please. Um, comment or mess out. Uh, we're gonna be trying to reach out to you para masabi namin kung paano mo po makiklaim ang iyong prize. Ma'am Cherilyn yeah. Fernandez. 
So may nagsusulat po ng ating name, so huwag kayong mag-alala. Later, ipopost ulit namin. Oh, yeah, hey. Actually, nung sumagot sila, di ba, tinatanong kasi yung email address. So ibig sabihin, malaki ang chance na sa true email po kayo ikokontak. Ayan. Congratulations to our first winner. So, nabawasan na tayo ng isa. We only have four more. We still have four more. Naku, nihintay ko na yung pangalan. Jennifer na ba ang sunod? Jennifer with a G? Ay! Layo eh. Layo. Our next winner is Melivit Blaskes. Yeah. Ayan. Blaskes. Melivit Blaskes. Okay, we have a winner, Melivit Blaskes. Congratulations. Congratulations. Let me drink. We're going to tayo. Ayan. Okay, okay. okay, let's spin the wheel. Ula na lang, Miss Jen. We still need three more winners. Wow, we're good in math. Yeah. <laughs> Jennifer na ba ito? Pam? No, or Pam. Sir Mark? Malapit na eh. <laughs> Our third winner is Miss Jemeline Lopez. Wow. Jemeline Lopez. Ayan. Ma'am Jemeline, congratulations. You're our third recipient or winner. Okay. Let's have a word. Fourth winner. Spin the wheel. From Batangas. Oh, from Caloocan. <laughs> from Pasig. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Our next winner, Miss Cristel and Anna. Again, our Christelle. next winner is Miss Cristel and Anna. Congratulations. Christelle. Congratulations. You have it for free. Okay. Yeah. So, what do we have right now, Miss Jen? We already have four winners and we're down to our last recipient. Sino kaya ang lucky last? Pangalan ko din. Pagdagaling sa Kaloocan. Mukha letter G na to. Nararamdaman ko na. Oh! Oh! Sayang. Our last winner is... Myraldine A. Vendero. Again, our last winner is Miss Myraldine A. Vendero. Congratulations. Yay! Wow. So Congratulations. The lucky five winners picked via Wheel of Names who will be receiving Google Nest Mini 2. Ayan. Ayan. Wait for the email, I think. Hintayin lang nila yung um, email na isasend sa kanila. Congratulations once Congratulations. again. Congratulations. Kapit tayo, baka pagkatapos naman ng ilang minuto, meron ka ulit. Oo, oh, oh. alam mo naman ng Google, di ba? Maraming surprises and very generous. Nasa kanila yeah. na nga ang lahat eh. So, we're gonna be giving Google some time to think about it. But mm. for now, okay, we're gonna be giving okay this time para sa kanyang closing and inspirational message for everybody let's all welcome of course kilalang kilala na natin ito kilalang kilala na natin ang pinakamaasahan okay we have sir mark anthony cc thank you miss pam ayan at salamat din miss jen to all of our teachers who are currently watching i keep on telling this all the time that empowering ourselves professionally is really a must. It's no longer a question kung kinakailangan bang libayad ang mga session dahil sa DepEd, ginagawa natin tong libre. We will always reach our teachers. Kung tingin natin ay mahirap, gagawa kami ng paraan para ito ay mapadali at mapasimple. With the help of our partner, Google, I'm sure magagawa po ninyo iyon ng wasto at tama. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate our six uh, soon-to-be Google Certified Innovators. Sila po ay nanggaling sa public school at mag-release po kami ng information about them. I am very thankful kasi matagal ko na po talagang pangarap yun. Um, dahil nung ako ay pumasok sa DepEd, 
isa lang talaga yung lagi kong binabanggit. Ang mga public school teachers ay magagaling. Nakita ko po yun sa aking pag-iikot. Kinakailangan lamang ay mabigyan sila ng tamang opportunity. Equal opportunity. Dahil kapag sila ay nabigyan ng pagkakataon, ilalabas at ilalabas nila ang kanilang buong musay. While I'm watching earlier, napapangiti po talaga ako. I'm very happy na nandito si Mang Riza. Hi, Mang Riza. Hindi po niya ako kilala, but uh, learning that she is from a LaSalle school, syempre pag binanggit yung LaSalle, malapit po talaga sa puso ko because I'm a former LaSallean educator. And having that kind of scenario na naranasan ko, nabigyan po kami ng lahat ng oportunidad ng paaralan yon para kami ay mapaghusay. At laging nababanggit ay sana yung mga nangyayari sa mga big private schools ay magawa po sa, mga, sa ating public school system. We are not copying but we are imitating what is good. And we replicate it. The more teachers that are empowered, actually malaki ang may tutulong nun para may bigay natin sa ating mga mag-aaral. Hindi kayo matatakot, hindi kayo maiinis, hindi kayo masastress dahil gagawa at gagawa tayo ng paraan para dyan. I encourage each one of you to check and revisit kung meron pong GEG o Google Educators Group sa inyo pong lugar. Pinapangarap ko po talaga na mabuo po ang learning community na ito na mapagpusay at makita po ang mga teachers, ang mga etek enthusiast na willing mag-share ng kanilang oras at panahon para may bahagi pa sa iba pang mga kaguruan. Being a former leader, ayun parang ang tanda ko na, being a former leader of GEG Ortigas, ako po ay natutuwa noon na marami akong nakikilalang mga teachers at sila ay aking nagagabayan. Hindi ko inimagine in my wildest dream that I will be the head of the ICTS at Tech. Given that opportunity, I am now tossing this one to all of you watching. Be the leader and lead. Hindi kakayanin ng isang tao. Kinakailangan, ititrain natin ang iba para ang iba ay maging leader din. Hindi sa lahat ng pagkakataon ay tayo lang ang kinakailangan na nagsasalita. Darating at darating ang panahon na tayong mga nagsasalita ay papalakpak sa backstage dahil meron tayong na-inspire na mga guro para masimulan at madugtungan ang ating mga nagawa. Mga kaguro, sana po bigyan nyo ng opportunity ang paggamit ng ating Google Workspace for Education Fundamentals o yung ating account mismo. Meron na rin po nito ang ating mga learners. It's just taking time na bigyan natin ng sapat na oras na ma-enhance natin ang ating skill at ito ay gamitin. Pwedeng sa isang taon, mahihirapan tayo, pero pag constant, lagi mo na siyang ginagawa. Mapapadali at mapapadali yan. At kayo mismo ay makakais ng new ways Paano ito i-deliver efficiently and effectively? Malay nyo, sa mga susunod na buwan, sa mga susunod na araw, kayo na ang nagsasalita at ibinabahagi ang inyong mga output. Pero tandaan ha, kapag kayo ay nagsashowcase ng mga projects ng inyong mga mag-aral, huwag ipapakita ang kanilang mga mukha. Gaya ng ginawa kanina ni Ma'am Riza, itago po yun kasi it's their privacy. Pag tayo ay nagsushowcase ng mga output, isa yun sa ating mga kinakailangan na gawing konsiderasyon. At tandaan natin na ang kagawaran, ang DepEd ay nakikinig at ibibigay ang ating mga kinakailangan na professional growth. Ito man ay binibigay ng ating partners from NEA, from Curriculum and Instruction o maging ng ICTS. Ito ay tulong-tulong sama-sama dahil meron tayong iisang layunin to have a better basic education system sa ating bansa. God bless us all. God bless us all indeed. Thank you so much, Sir Mark. Uh, busy mo, pero you have graced um, our event at the day. Sa so, hindi tayo nagtagpo kanina, ano po? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sir Mark. You are such an inspiration to many. Thank you. Okay. Sir Mark, sana makasama ka namin next time ulit face to face. Pentuhan sure. and all. Yes. Thank you po again. Thank you. Have a good weekend. See you later now. Mi pahabu talaga. Thank you, Sir Mark. Miss Jen, alam kong pareho tayo kanina na napa hashtag sana all. 
Yeah. <laughs> Napasana all talaga ako, Miss Pam. But anyway, hindi man tayo sinuwerte sa raffle, buong maghapo naman tayong sinuwerte sa dami, siksikliglig at umaapaw natin ng learning from our speakers. Right? Sabi nga, winning and learning... It's really a Saturday to celebrate today. Google really knows the desires of our hearts. Again, congratulations to our raffle winners and hep hep hooray to all our participants who were so engaged into our discussions. You are all amazing and we are wishing to have you back in our next Google events. Remember, it's not about teaching technology it's about using technology to teach this has been miss jennifer awatin desus deputy tv teacher broadcaster from alae batangas province your host and your google buddy and of course this has been pamela amor villanueva also a deputy tv teacher broadcaster from sdo kalookan lugar ng matatapang bayan ni andres bonifacio also your chummy google <laughs> Charmy Google host hoping to meet all of you again in our next Google session. Never stop dreaming. Always learn from the heart. Until we meet again, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Bye. Good day. This is Teacher Rowan. I'll be your guide in exploring Google Apps for education, for teaching and learning. In Google for Education, teachers can connect and collaborate easily while staying on task. It gives teachers the freedom to spend more time personalizing the learning experience and less time managing it. Students can learn essential skills such as 21st century problem solving, which they can use it in their future careers. As such, the accessibility features will also help and assist every learner to do their best work. Google offers different useful applications that we can use to connect education to technology. This will help our teachers as a 21st century educators to innovate and find ways on how to make teaching and learning more exciting, engaging, effective, and flexible to the demands of the society. Let's re-explore the education experience by discovering new angles to create collaborate and communicate as one. Para sa bata, para sa bayan, at para sa guro. Ang pagkatuto, huwag gawing komplikado. Sulong edukalidad.